<laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> This is the nature of change. Bruh. If you resist it, you have dukkha, you have frustration. Cryptocurrencies basically have no value. Bitcoin is going to zero. Zero. When it comes out, zero. Cryptos are not currencies. Full stop. Cryptos are highly speculative assets that claim their fame as currency, possibly, but they're not. They are not. I would, I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. The only use of time is, how do I buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> you shouldn't expect it to go up. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting, the pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. I saw the flaws and the reason why it would never actually work, but and I didn't buy it. I, I will, no, I do not own one. I don't own any cryptocurrency. I never will. Spaghetti news, Jose, Jose, and everybody on the chat, welcome in. Let's blow those comments up. We are live. It is Thursday night, the last Thursday. Nope. Uh, second to last nope. Thursday in November. That's not the last Thursday. Is that the last Thursday in November? Nope. Second to last. No. Yes. Second to last Thursday. It's almost over. I hope you guys had a great successful year and you made a bunch of uh, money and you're doing real, real well out there. Little real, real things out there. Just so long as, yes, exactly. So it's not fake. As Unless it's as, fake business. You know what? And I, like one of the lead stories of the night, which you guys are, I'm just going to tease this one. This is great. This, like, that's how excited I am about this. Show me story. a titty, bro. Show me that titty. This is going to be so good. Watch this. Okay. Look at this. Come on, show the main headline. Don't do this to me. Come on, give me the headline. Give me the headline. Come on. Yay! Where's the advertisement? Look at this. This is such a great story. Come on. Wait. Oh, gosh. Uh, What's the story? Such a great start. <laughs> it's damn CNN and their advertising. Like, I can't read the article. Basically, this couple... There we go. A California couple vanished after stealing millions in COVID relief funds. They left a goodbye note for their three children. <laughs> <laughs> So no. Wait a minute, they just took a bunch of money and left? Yeah. Where are they at now? I don't know, Cabo? we're going to read that later. But that's, they left a note for their children, and apparently it says, like, we'll be I together. Think they look like my new neighbors, actually. Dude, they're from California. You know, like... Uh, yes, you don't say. And it, uh, the, the note says something to the effect of, like, we'll be together one time. <laughs> we'll be together sometime again in the future. <laughs> Bye-bye. I mean, that's... I don't know. If, I, if my parents abandoned me, I don't know. That'd be a little bit better than just dad saying he's going to go get milk at the gas station and never coming back, but not too much better. We're going to try to figure out how get much... Milk and never came back. How much did they get? How much was it worth it? You know? Are we talking $20,000? That's still nothing, bro. I guess what I'm saying. Are we talking... Are we talking $20,000 and they left everything We're behind? $200,000. Dude, there are three children. Imagine, you know, you're a parent. You have Three children. Yeah, maybe those, maybe, but maybe those three kids are fucking brats, bro. What the fuck, you don't know. And that that never is allowed. Have you seen Malcolm you, you in the middle? Maybe they were that. Maybe behind. they were just that bad or worse. How were the children gonna spoil their uh, like plans to escape? Why'd they need to leave the kids? You uh, don't have kids. Here's either. an idea: take you don't got kids, the kids no. with you. Yeah, but that's that, that, they're expensive. Yeah, I guess if you only have twenty thousand, 
If you need that to so be how much was it? Was it I don't know. We're going to look into that later, but that's that's oh, a teaser geez. for you. Oh, no, that's from now. We're not covering it now? No. <laughs> Opie Taylor in the live comments says he'd hit it. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Britney Spears later, too, and she kind of looks like Britney Spears. A little bit more obese? Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Freedom Matter says that's what I thought at first. Uh, racist white girl date brown guy. <laughs> Mainstream media. Oh. <laughs> that is breaking news. Uh, take a look at your future, everybody. It's white men and brown... No, white women and brown men. Nothing wrong with it. But I have noticed that this is highly advertised. Just so you know. So nothing nothing wrong with to, it. But you're trying to say they're trying to make us all... No, it's, it's, yeah, it's just like... um. Like every mainstream, like every popular, there always has to be a. Are you like trying to say There always has to be a gay guy. There always has to be an interracial couple. It's celebrated as if it's something very, very. Special. Are you trying to say that they're trying to make a, 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 a what is it? A um, damn it! I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, are you trying to say that they're trying to make a master race, a brown master race? No, that'll happen naturally. Okay. We don't need to celebrate things. Ridiculously like that. Even though this isn't a celebration, this is a criminal. Oh, it's not? No. Celebrate good times. Come on. No, I mean, I'm not racist. It seems like they're celebrating, you. bro. I mean, fuck. Wait, let's clarify. We're not racist. No. Oh, you, you can clarify that. <laughs> clarify I mean, these nuts, bro. I don't need to clarify anything. Yeah. Well, I, that's true. I don't need to clarify anything either. Too late. Too late, bro. Oh, I already clarified. You clarified the fuck out of hey, that. Hey, I didn't tell you guys. You know I'm... what that means? When you got to clarify something, that usually means guilty. Yeah. Um, See, I'm going to clarify I'm an asshole. Did I tell you guys? So last Saturday, I woke up. I, oh, I was actually Friday night. I downloaded this app to get that Nintendo Switch that I've been chasing around everywhere. Okay. And this app called like Hot. What's it called? Hot stock. It tells you when a uh, limited quantity item. Hot stock. It tells you, you put your zip code in, and it tells you like when a limited quantity item becomes available, whether it's your local Best Buy, your local Target, whatever. So Friday night at around 10 p.m., all it's snowing outside, and suddenly my, the notifications are going off like once every 15 minutes constantly saying in store pickup at target in bemidji you gotta tell that bitch to chill bro every 15 minutes like blowing up your phone like that <laughs> 12 30 a.m it's still doing that and i'm looking on the like i i hop into the app i go over the target app and i'm clicking into it and i'm like uh purchase purchase and it's not letting me so then i think to myself okay so it's like the old school days when you had to go to the store and pick it up in the morning so I look at the hours. I would have called them, but they were already closed. So then I look at the hours, and I have to show up at Target, which is like hour and like an hour away, at 7 a.m. So I go to sleep, at like, and I wake up at like 5.30, and I'm on the road by 6 a.m., and I'm heading over to Target to get my you know, game console right when it opens. And I walk into Target, and I'm like, hey, this app is was going crazy last night. It's telling me you guys have the Switch OLEDs. He goes, let me check. <laughs> he scans his thing. Nope. He goes, we have negative one in stock. We have negative one. How do you have negative one? I don't... That's what he told me. He said we have like... I think It might have even been like negative two. I would, I would have been like, let me see the computer. <laughs> hey, can I deal with somebody who's a little bit smarter than you? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, I would have looked down. Would have been like, just, hey, dude, you're not just... making any sense. I drove all. The... I'm not gonna leave right now. I drove an hour, and you're telling me something that doesn't even make sense. So please, dude, I would have been like, literally, I would have been all over that shit. I would have been like, the fuck, you mean negative one? Let me see that shit. I don't believe you, bro. I've been like, hey, negative one. Yeah, stop fucking with me, okay? <laughs> the fuck, oh man. How many you got? How many you got? <laughs> Let me see that damn machine of yours. The fuck, man. The negative fuck, one. Man. What do you think this the is? Fuck, man. This isn't the metaverse. I'd be very upset. That's only possible in the metaverse. Where you going? Tim is getting very upset. Yeah, I say it in third person. Yeah, yeah, he's like, Tim is getting very upset. <laughs> so then I, I go, I leave, 
and I walk into the Walmart, which is across the street, because I figure, hey, I'm here at 7 a.m. Might as well walk into Walmart and see if they got any. And the people at Walmart were just the nicest people. Like, the people at Target were sort of, it was 7 a.m., they didn't want to be there, the store was, had just opened. But, but Walmart's the, open 78 hours a day. No, I think the Walmart opened like 6 a.m. And I walk mm-hmm. in, and the greeter, there's like two greeters, and one of the greeters is like, hello, hello, and he's like all happy. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I go like, oh, how's it going? I go, oh, good morning, how's it going? And he goes, just getting started, just getting started. <laughs> getting started, you're, you super, know, super, super nice. Up yet. And then I walk back to the electronics store, and this guy who's like I don't say morbidly obese lightly. He is morbidly round. obese. He is round, like he's big, and like he's, rotund, like rotund. Yeah, and like um, like if you would have to, if you would have to put a weight on him, like what oh, number? Don't make. What numbers are we talking here? Four hundreds. Oh, he's a he's a four hundred pounder. I mean, he's a he's a he's a he's a whopper. That's all you like to say. Big. Big whopper, big so, whopper of a guy. But he, I ask him, "Do you have any real switch, man's man switch OLEDs?" And he goes, "Let me walk back and check." So I'm already liking this guy a lot better because he's actually going back and checking. He doesn't have a machine to scan. But anyways, he comes back and he doesn't have it. And then I go out to the car. And while I'm in Walmart, by the way, he chases you to his car. To as, car. No, as I'm like even driving away from Target, I'm going to Walmart. My hot stock app on my phone is still going in-store pickup at target <laughs> like oh. it's still alerting me about target they go fuck themselves so i'm sitting in the par- yeah i'm sitting in the parking lot at walmart and then i'm like what the hell is going on with this app so i continually refresh the target app and i go like i f- like i couldn't have done this like the night before i was looking at this i didn't want to have to drive to target it's the- whatever seven a.m and I, I'm refreshing and refreshing, and then suddenly it goes like I click add to cart, and it actually does it. And then I click proceed to checkout, and then it goes, oh, the item's gone. And then I go back and I start refreshing the app, and then I click add to cart, proceed to checkout, and I lose it again. And then on the third time, proceed to checkout, successfully pay. And it's, it, I got the Nintendo Switch, everybody hey. applause! <laughs> Hallelujah! I got the OLED, baby. Hell oh, yeah, man! So that's it's now a fucking celebration, man! Celebration, right? You're gonna be so... the most popular kid in, in your in your grade school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's um. That was my. That was another. Story. That was it. Well, I, you know. I gave you guys the story about the police officer on Tuesday. That happened Sunday morning, and now I gave you that story. That was on, that was Saturday morning. Look at that. So I don't know what stories you got for us, but that was exciting. As that. Yeah, it's like you're living. You're the one living in Mexico, man. Want to tell us something we don't know? <laughs> Bruh. Um, the president is out here. The president of Mexico came out here. By the way, there was a comment I wanted to respond to. Alberto goes, I've been going to Burger King. I only keep getting Dogecoin. So I went to Burger King yesterday and I ordered off the mobile app. And Alberto, am I supposed to be keeping an eye on my email for a code that I can apply to Robinhood? And then how much Dogecoin am I going to get? Yeah, I have no, there's no Dogecoin out here. There's no promotion like that in Mexico, unfortunately. No, I thought Mexico was more friendly towards the cryptocurrency space than, you know, America. Meanwhile, but it's like in, in America. Burger, like in the U.S., it's like they need to convince people to go eat Burger King. There's so much competition. But in Mexico, people just want to eat Burger King because it's like a foreign thing. So it's popular because it's... Burger King, you get what I'm saying? So it doesn't really need to do promos like that, or mm. it's not the same, you know what I mean? It's just more uh, just there. It's more like, yeah. Opie Taylor says, I miss the cop story. In summary, Opie, the police called me on Sunday, and I thought one of my tenants died. Like, he's an old man, and I thought he just kicked the bucket, and I was about to have, like, a dead body in my place. Pretty tragic mm-hmm. for a second. I was like, I'm like, whoa, God. Whoa, this is gonna be a weird, this gonna be a weird Sunday. Real shit now. Great. Because I don't. I, at that point, I think what I do, like, let's say one of my tenants did die. So obviously, the police take care of the body. Mm-hmm. 
and they inform the family and my job is solely to like get in there get everything cleaned out and rent <laughs> right like i don't mess around vacancies it should be on apartments.com within like the first 48 hours after it's all ready to go i mean actually no the family has time to clean out everything and then if they don't want to pay rent the following month, I think technically it has to be on the market. Right? Is that unreasonable? I mean, yeah, you gotta wait, you gotta at least wait until the stench of dead person, you know, before you can rent that that's out. True. But that doesn't take that long, right? I mean depends on how I long. I mean, depends on how long they've been yeah. there. And if, not, if they died during the winter, it's very different than if they died during the summer. Because if they died during the hotter it is, the more um, the more prone, well, yeah. again, the hotter it is, the quicker they decompose. So the more prone it is to like really stink up and be nasty. But in the, in the like, let's say they die in the cold weather, they're pretty much just like preserved like a fucking meat popsicle until, you know what I mean? They wow. fall out or somebody finds, you know what I mean? Until they basically, until you show up, hey, where well, the fuck's my rent? I mean, it's, it's, in fact, Wait, wasn't now, that what we talked about? Now that I say that, in fact, yeah, you, you won't have to worry about that either because you know you just end up sending the cops over there to you know evict the guy because you know you're such a great guy. And when they show up and they just find the meat popsicle, then on Monday, I think we talked about how, like, if I was down in like Mexico or something, the only way I'd figure out that somebody got themselves locked out of their building and it's cold. Is if like rent? How just, cold is it? I don't know because it's like fucking eighty-five degrees and like eighty percent humidity oh, it's here. Cold here. It's like a fucking sauna. I had to have, have the. I got literally have the AC on right now. So technically, we're at twenty degrees right now. But what's the wind chill like? The wind chill. It feels much colder than that. Wind chill. Twenty degrees. Twenty degrees. Get the fuck out of here. That's cold, man. No, I mean, it's not as cold. We're, we're, we get to, like, negative 15, and then the wind chill goes to, like, negative 40. Negative? Like, like as a negative, uh, like, as a negative uh, Nintendo Switches? <laughs> yeah. We got negative degrees. Although negative. Well, that's actually possible with Fahrenheit, as opposed to the inventory of a Target store. You can't have negative product, sir. I should sure. I should not have, like, let him get away with that. I should. Who am what what have I come this far in life to go to a retail store and be told they have negative inventory and not question it? Like that's a that's a real lame moment in my life when I go. That's oh. okay. It was early, bro. You didn't have your coffee yet. Yeah, it was seven a.m. Yeah, but for so me, right now, for it's me just to walk away and be like, I, yeah. let me go. Oh, ah, I think I laughed and I was like, oh yeah, they're pretty sold out then. You don't have any. Okay, bye bye. No, I was going to say, right now it's 77 degrees with 87% humidity. Opie in the live comments goes, did the police shoot any dogs when they arrived on the scene? No, but as soon as I heard he was locked out and we started figuring out, like I said, oh, well, and his relative had a key and the police officer asked me for his relative's phone number and I said, if the relative doesn't answer, I can drive down. I'm about four yeah. hours away. And the officer goes, I mean, I, something to the effect of, like, we can knock down the front door. And also, and also, <laughs> and sir. And I'm like, no, sir. don't be knocking the, down the sir, door. Well, well, we can't knock down the door. Can we at least uh, find the dog to shoot for you? What about the window in the back? <laughs> anything, anything? Any kind of destruction? I, 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 I was looking at the window in the back, and I think I could break that thing down real easy for you. Yeah. I can, uh, I can slash his tires. Yeah. Will that work? Walmart in Espanol. I'm just reading the comments. Walmart. I don't want like have have you ever slashed tires in your life? No, actually I haven't. I've uh I've come close because I've been in some back in back in Miami especially. I've been I've been in some situations and uh where yes, I've come real close and wanting to do something like I've, that. I've, I've been never... in, I've been in I've been in situations where I've like basically given like I am going to slash this person's tire. Did you? No, I never did. Yeah, but there was. I've always moments. wanted to one. I always wondered what it would feel like to slash a tire. I googled. Is it like, I, is it like stabbing a person? It, it is. is it yeah, you just take the knife 
and you punch oh, no, 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 no. You punch I mean, her on the side. Feel, no, 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 no. I mean, when you're actually puncturing the tire, does it feel like when you're puncturing someone's lung, you know? Like, how the hell would we know that, bro? <laughs> Well, I'm going to exist. Yeah, you're right. How would we know that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. How, you're right. How would we know that? Yeah, I don't, I have no idea. You're right. Moving on. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I wonder if somebody in the live comments, though, has slashed tires. All right, let's move on. We can. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, no more, uh, no more slash. Okay. We don't want to, we don't want any kind of a criminal investigation or anything like that. Even though, uh, is there a statu statute of limitations for hurting somebody property damage yes yeah 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 that's right there is. property damage depends on your state okay florida i think florida is like six years okay we're good <laughs> so how many tires did you <laughs> you slash oh, no, slashed. oh okay moving on other things slashed how do you guys like this uh the title of today's big story, the Staples what's Center. It, what's the title? It's the Staples Center. It says, goodbye, Staples Center. Hello, Crypto.com Arena. And by the way, the Crypto.com coin shot up 30% since this was announced yesterday. Oh, so wow. Congratulations to the holders. You know, it's weird because the Staples Center, I don't know why, but I never in a million years occurred to me that it's named after Staples. You know? The, the store i always thought for i mean i'd driven by there a bunch of times i used to live there you know and uh, in la and it's uh it's by the way it's massive the whole area but anyways the point is is that i just always thought like staples like i don't know just like a name because it's la you know what i mean like it's just like a fucking uh the guggenheim or something you know what i mean just the name and you it just now it fucking occurred to me that it's called staple it was called staples center i'm like damn what a lame ass fucking name for you, you thought it was a, a stadium in LA, and now they got a really cool name, which is crypto.com. So, I guess, which by the way, crypto.com, see, it's just the, the name is so scammy, so scammy, right? But it's not scammy, it's actually a real thing. But yet, I, I just say the word crypto.com, and I'm in, the, I'm in crypto for anyone out there who doesn't know, but. Still, I, I say that, and it just sounds so scammy to me. You know why? It's because it sounds like the dot-com bubble. I mean, it's like right now. But you know what I mean? It's like, oh, where'd you buy your, your Bitcoin? Oh, uh, crypto.com. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound scammy. It just sounds scammy the way, like, the coin itself. If you go on CoinMarketCap and you look up this coin, you have to go crypto.com coin, and there it is. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? It's, it's like because a, they threw the dot com like, in there all the time. It's nothing wrong. It's like internet.com. It's like internet.com. By the way, that's that's interesting. I wonder what internet.com is. Internet.com. Let's read the story. The okay. downtown Los Angeles venue, home of the Lakers, the Clippers, the Kings, Sparks, will wear the new name for 20 years. 20 years is a long time. That is a long time. For 20 years under the deal between the Singapore Cryptocurrency Exchange and AEG, the owner and operator of the arena, both parties announced Tuesday that Crypto.com paid more than $700 million for the naming rights. Oh, that's really? Nothing. That's, that's it? nothing. That's nothing. For 20 years? That's Get the fuck out of yeah. Or is that, is that, is that, I mean, is that total or is that per it year? Just says, it has to be. No, that's just in total. Wow, that is very, that is extremely cheap. Yeah. And something that, uh, that is basically like an exchange and all that shit, you know what I mean? But that's something that they can definitely afford. That's like throwing money right, away. Right, that's to... like, imagine Binance. Like they could afford. Yeah, Binance could have fucking done that, bro. This is a sing this must be like Singapore's Binance, which is perfectly fine. I mean, that's crazy. But for seven hundred million dollars, Binance would be able to do that every. Pretty to much me, that's the craziest part that they did it for so cheap. For maybe if it was like a five-year deal or a ten-year deal, I could see. Yeah, five years million. that makes sense. But twenty years, seven hundred million. Get the fuck out! I guess you know you have to think it is only basketball. Like basketball is not. No, the no, the Staples Center is a Staples Center, bro. They have a lot of oh, things whatever. going on. No, 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 I used no, to no, live no, there, no. bro. I used to live there. I oh, yeah. So you're not biased. 
No, no, oh, no. The Staples Center, no, bro? What I'm that shit's what popping, bro. The Staples no, what I'm Center? saying is that, no, you, you just said that only Laker games go on there. And I'm saying that, no, a lot of events go on there. That's fine. That's all I said. The biggest pub- publicized events are like, what are you talking the tel- about, bro? Biggest, no, man, the it's a fucking televised... arena. No, it's, it's like a major tele- arena in a major city. Like, all tell me the biggest event events. That, tell me the biggest. There's like a million events. things that happen there, bro. Like conventions and shit. Like, um, what are you talking about, man? Ugh, I don't believe you. What do you just look it up? Let's, it, go, it to sta- let's go to StaplesCenter.com. Let's go to StaplesCenter.com. Yeah, dude, it should be very easy to confirm. It's like any other major, major. That I, I used to, I, I drove, I driven through there a bunch of times. That's a major. It's a major like convention uh, oh, center. I, I, you know, I'm not biased at all. I was right there. It was, it was popping, bro. I was right there. But bro. yeah, I don't. I'm confused. That's where like, we, where like, we, that's where, like where me, are we arguing? That's like, that's like me saying, oh yeah, Minnesota. That's a big. Dude, that's like where all the technology is happening. Okay. What are you talking about, bro? Wait, I, I think I think wait, hold on, hold on. I think we. I, I don't know what. Wait, I, what? I'm. Why are you upset with me? In a way, I'm. What? I'm confused. Look, see, look, this is still right there. Enrique Iglesias and Ricky Martin live in who concert. Who cares? It's just who cares about those guys? I don't know those guys. I couldn't name one song of them. Yeah, but I don't understand why. Is this the first time that you know that stadiums also do things besides basketball? No, I'm saying. Oh. The, that that this doesn't okay. Enrique Iglesias and Ricky Martin drive zero value compared to the Laker publicity that comes from having the rights to the stadium. This is nothing, nothing. The value of the naming rights, having oh Enrique Iglesias and Ricky Martin on a on a Thursday night. Oh well, yes, no, the you're missing the, are, no, no, dude, you're missing the point. Listen, it's anytime, an entertainment center, but I'm it, saying the yeah, only reason just, to own a, a stadium's naming rights uh-huh. is because of televised events. And all I'm saying is that the price. Why? Of, I, why? No, that doesn't make sense. The price huh? of this one, the price what? of the price of this event of seven hundred million dollars for twenty years, is because it's NBA. If it was. U.S. Bank or the Los Angeles. I mean, let's just look at it. Let's look at the naming rights for no, the new. No, man, I think you're wrong, man. The, the, well, let's look at the naming rights for the new Raiders that you name, stadium. Any, hold on. Anytime that you call that stadium by its name, Crypto.com Arena, which is, again, yes, the televised events of basketball, they're, they're probably the number one. Um, but the thing is that what, anytime that that name is mentioned, which is a lot, Okay, they're saying the name, so it's not only for televised events. Like, I mean, that that name is said uh, said a bunch of times. You know what I mean? For many things, like look at this, look at this, man. Look at this. Look at me. Look at look look at look this. Dude, even man. if it's at, this, hold on, hold on. But real quick, even if they're advert, look right now. You gotta understand, like L.A. Just just to give you a quick example, L.A. has like twenty five million people living like in that area alone, and basically any kind of event that's held there, which there's a lot of events a year, um, the crypto.com name is being put in front of um, 25 million people at least, at least. You know what I mean, every time, every like, you know, daily. So it, it's, it's, it's more than just TV. I know what you're saying about the TV and then a basketball game is being like, for example, the Lakers playing to the Pistons is, is watching New York. And you know whatever you know what I mean I, I know what you're saying I know it's a bigger like uh, more reach it's a it's a more reach of the market but it, I don't think that that's there's there's so much more to that you know what I mean like no, it's here's, not, here's my uh, point though like but you know what I'm saying right like no yeah. no I totally disagree with you man <laughs> I don't but what do you what do you what are we here, disagreeing here's, on? here's my point that this is my what point. are we disagreeing on I don't, my, I don't my, and I don't think you even disagree with this but okay okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what we're disagreeing. Here's on. the point. I'm right here, dude. The uh, I'm saying that because it's basketball, it uh-huh. went for so cheap. Look at this. The Allegiant Field, the new home of the Las Vegas Raiders, costs Allegiant. Allegiant is paying in the neighborhood of twenty million to twenty-five million dollars per year. For comparison. They paid seven hundred million for twenty years. You know what? Let's wait, hold on. Let's wait. wait. Let's do the math. Hold yeah, on. Do hold the on. math. That's interesting. These naming rights are pretty cheap. Man, where's uh, my calculator? Damn it. Uh, By comparison, the naming rights for U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis for the Minnesota Vikings 
is $11 million for 20 years. Holy shit. $11 million for 20 years. All of these crypto companies should step in and start buying these naming rights because they have the money and it would be good for the publicity. Dogecoin should buy one. Come on now. This is cheap. You don't even have oh, look at that. No, yeah, no. Listen, the Staples Center is more expensive than the Raiders. Raiders, um, they basically, that's like a 20. It's divided by, I divided uh, the numbers and I got 28. And, and so it should be anything under 20 for it to be more expensive. Well, look, I, I mean, I just, if you were listening, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, I know it's Minnesota, so it's a small market, but they paid $11 million for 20 years total. Dude, when dude. was that? When was that done? And 2016. When... Oh, wow. Look at that. That yeah, is but, but it is a smaller market, but it doesn't matter, though. The thing is that, you know, it's it all yeah, has no. to do it all has to do with a lot of it with the city and how many events are actually in that stadium. Doubt. So, for example, Doubt. like in Miami, like Miami is like again, dude, they have those zillion events there, and a lot of them are actually like international. For example, like they have things like uh, when they have like baseball games or soccer, and, and so a lot of things. That's what I'm saying. There's many things involved, and basically, it's it, a lot of has to do, I think, with how many events are there and the reach of you know what I mean, like the the people. You know what I mean? Like uh, th that are in the surrounding area. So, you know, Minnesota is a smaller market and nobody's traveling to Minnesota to go see an event in that stadium. While in, in California or anywhere within that area, people would travel to L.A. to the Staples Center to go see Ricky Martin. You know what I think? You know what I, mean? I think the I think the Singapore company just got swindled because I think they paid way too much. And I thought huh? it was I thought it was I cheap. Too little. I think they paid too little. I guess m maybe they paid too little after inflation. There's a motherfucking Staples Center. Like hey, we're uh, never gonna hear that name ever again. That's crazy to me. You know what I mean? That's like an like, iconic type name too. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of weird too. But even but I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's only iconic because the what Lakers was the Staples? Player. What was the Staples Center called before Staples Center? I don't know. I think it was built. I'm sure LA built a stadium for the Lakers when they moved there because the Lakers used to be for out of Minnesota. Yeah, and no, dude, but that, that stadium is... You know, that's kind of like our team, bro. Yeah, no, no. They, that's they kind of were... a Minnesota-based organization. Okay, when did they... Okay, hold on. Quick question. When did they leave Minnesota? Like 50, 60 years ago? No, bro. like 2000... No! When did the Lakers leave Minnesota? Did they not leave in 2000, bro? Dude, the Lakers have been around for like 100 million years, When bro. did the Lakers leave Minneapolis? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did not play for the Minnesota Lakers, Okay. Minneapolis Lakers lasted until uh shit. Okay, bro. I think they left in the sixties, bro. Okay, so that's like seventy years ago. Yeah, they left in the sixties. Wait, no, sixty years ago. I don't know 60. basketball, and that's why I'm saying I think they got swindled because nobody knows basketball except for the Chinese market. China China loves basketball and good for them. I mean, nothing wrong with it. I you know, I think it's you know, we like football. A Europeans like football, and we like football. And they, the China people, they love basketball, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's great. Crypto.com, it's illegal in China. They can have that stadium be blasted over there. Of all television. the sports that the Chinese like, that's a weird one, right? In because fact, they're so short. Oh, uh, that's why they love it. It's like watching, like. Amazing they, human they, being. Uh, I don't know. It's like watching my... giants come to town and play in yeah, front of Yeah, but that's you. weird because my experience, most countries that love a sport, they love it because they're really good at it. You know what I mean? So Brazil loves soccer because they're the best. Um, same as Argentina. Uh, like Cuba and Venezuela love baseball because they're really good at it. You know what I mean? So it's just the uh, same as Japan. You know what I mean? So with China, I mean, they're not really good at any sports, are they? Ping pong. <laughs> You know, it might also be because of the shoe industry, because like that's that the NBA has helped China grow economically a lot. So it might be like just their partnership with Nike and everything else is like, damn, dude, that's like, yeah, that's yeah, it's an American based thing, but it's kind of ours. Yeah. But by the way, China is not Singapore or in the words of Singapore. No, that's is why this is actually funny. In fact, this is like because. China has technically banned cryptocurrency, so it's hilarious that the biggest, uh, like, westernized sport 
uh, sport franchise or franchise and everything else, like the LA Lakers, they're huge and they play play at this stadium and now they're playing at crypto.com. This is like America banning alcohol and then one of the largest televised events in that day during the prohibition was like beer arena <laughs> straight from England. Alcohol, you know, alcohol shots arena. So kind of like in their face a little bit. Yeah, but that's uh, but I mean, crypto.com at the end of the day, um, the reason that I mean, who know? I don't know. You, well, let's we should keep reading. Up, let's keep reading. Yeah, we should look up who owns crypto.com because at the end of the day, it could still be like an American or Canadian no, or no, whatever. No. They just offshore it because, you know, again, yeah, it's yeah. the laws and regulations and shit, which again makes it funny that crypto.com, um, yeah, I wonder how what the crypto.com, how they function in the US. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I mean, uh... that's okay. They paid seven hundred million for the naming rights for twenty years, according to sources familiar with the. Dude, term. I just put crypto.com, and guess who the first the first guy to show up? There's like a little video that plays, and guess who guess who uh, is promoting crypto.com? Mm. Take a guess. One second. You'll never guess. Ben Bit, Affleck. Uh, Bitboy. I mean, not Ben Affleck. Oh. What the fuck is his name? The other guy. The guy. Um, the really Ty good Lopez. guy. Lopez. No, not Ben Affleck, the guy that was his partner. Dude, I don't know your boomer actors. I mean, Ben Affleck oh. is a real ancient actor. Oh my God, he is? I think so. He was like Batman yeah. in 2009. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I like mean, Ben Affleck is not popular anymore. No, not Ben Affleck. What's the other guy's name? The guy, they were both in Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Goodwill Hunting? <laughs> Moving on, dude. Damn it, man! What the fuck is the name? name. (laughs) Anyways, he's the guy. uh, He's famous. The guy. He looks like. uh, Gosh, Jesus! I can't believe I can't fucking say his name. Uh, You let's keep reading. Jose will figure that out. Famous guy. He's super famous. He's just as making it one of the biggest naming deals in sports history. The arena's new logo will debut on December 25th when the Lakers host the Brooklyn Nets. They know what they're doing. And all Staples Center signage will be replaced with the new name by June 2022. Crypto.com's chief executive, Chris Marcelek, hopes that the new name will come to be seen as a sign of the times. In the next few years, people will look back at this moment as the moment when crypto crossed the chasm into the mainstream. Get the fuck out of here, dude. It's already traded on the future exchange on the Chicago market, future market, or whatever. Yeah, but this this is is, oh the chasm into the mainstream. This is taking it to the next level because, look, real quick, this is taking it to the next level because think about it. The people that own the stadium as well, they got to stick with the name. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like imagine that pets.com would have done this back in the 90s and we literally would have had the pets.com stadium up until like 2018 you know what i mean like think about that so or 2019 you know what i mean like i mean that would have only been entertaining because of the fact that pets.com failed yeah i know but i mean i'm all i'm saying is that you know where this is that means that this is you know may it is mainstream i i mean i agree i mean you can't get any more mainstream no this is literally. dude burger king is offering cryptocurrency when you buy off their mobile app right we've, we've, very we've mainstream, already been mainstream but it's still, mainstream. But it's still this, but guy, hold on. this guy building up that he's this naming deal is crypto crossed the people will look back at this moment as the moment when crypto crossed no the no no definitely not no into, i didn't yeah, say that bullshit I bro i know i didn't say that oh okay i didn't say that but but definitely, I mean, think about it. Like, I mean, how, how crazy is it that now, like, for example, uh, fucking, you know, the, the you know, is it the Lakers, you know, uh, are playing game six of the NBA finals coming out of, you know, coming out of fucking uh, crypto.com stadium. It is pretty crazy. We'll be back, we'll be back at crypto.com stadium after this break. Right. It's or arena, crazy. whatever the fuck it is. Isn't it? This is just a brilliant move from the guys at the AEG because the next decade belongs to crypto, he said. At this position, and the positions LA and this particular venue, and this positions LA and this particular venue right at the center of it. <laughs> no, it does. Oh my God. AEG owns a number of sports teams, including the Kings, the Galaxy, and the venues, including LA Live and London's O2 Arena. 
Yeah, to me, this is pretty cool, man. I mean, I don't know. I, oh, I it mean, is I, cool. I know. It is cool. I'm just, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm just me, not ready for. I wasn't ready for this guy's sales pitch about how ginormous of a deal this was. I just wasn't. Well, ready yeah, for you know, that. I mean, dude, remember, it's a fucking the guys in LA for crying out loud. They, you know, they already, you already know how they're gonna like blow it up and talk, you know, just talk it up, you know, fake their way to make it. But I mean, there's no need. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day um they should you know if there was any other city they probably would have been a little bit more boring about it you know what i mean but this guy's trying, trying to say that you know well you already know he's trying yeah. to i mean we're, we're reading it it's a bit of a match in made in heaven when we think about the type of brands that we like to partner with crypto.com is looking for the most unique branding platform to make a statement and drive adoption it is a good idea i mean dogecoin should do this and we're looking for an innovative... Can you imagine like Dogecoin Arena? Like, uh, yeah. Where instead of, we... how cool would it be if Dogecoin all of a sudden would fucking be the name of your Viking stadium? Since, I mean, yeah. it is pretty cheap, right? Somebody, just Correct. some rich fucking crypto nerd fucking... You could do it. You could fucking rename no, I... your stadium for 25 million, bro, to Dogecoin. I, I mean, there, there's a world where that's probably more likely than apparently me... Um, this, then this podcast having a thousand subscribers. <laughs> no, we no man. Come on, listen. We're gonna have a hundred thousand subscribers, and you're, right, gonna, continue. you're gonna read the. I was just you're trying gonna, to come up with something. If you have it, if you have, if you have, fuck you, money, and you find out right now that you could change the name of the, the fucking Minnesota Viking Stadium, you know, for thirty million. All right, let's just say fifty million. For Twenty right? years. For, for for whatever years, bro. You know what I mean? For the fucking, for, it could be one year. Get out of here. You got fuck you money, bro. Um, anyways, for to, and you can no. you can actually change it to Dogecoin, Dogecoin Stadium. You're gonna tell me you're not would, gonna do it? I would only do it if it was like at least 10 years. I'm not spending a million dollars on anything for just one year and have it be gone. Except you're right, it is a big deal to have, you know, the branding all around. Like it's forever. It is forever. So even it, you know, it happened. It happened. Even if it if it goes away after a year, it depends. No, I, st I, mean, I still think it's sort of a waste of money, but I think it's a good idea for. Ten. I think it's a good idea as a whole for a movement of cryptocurrency, but I think one person like me buying the naming rights for a stadium might be a little bit ridiculous. That was fucking cool as fuck, actually. And again, the whole point is, dude. I, I've, I've been looking at some stats of the, the whole, uh, you know, where we're at now. You know, when it comes to. The you know the the economy and like how people are doing you know there's a lot of fucking people our age and younger that basically already have kind of enough money to not have to go to McDonald's ever again. Hey, yeah, but you know what I mean. And they're doing whatever they're doing. No, Jose, that neither of us will ever in our lifetime spend twenty million dollars on the naming rights for a stadium. I would have to. If I was Elon Musk right now, maybe totally do it if I was Dolphins Elon Musk, win. or if I don't interrupt me, if I was Elon Musk, or if I was somebody who is that rich, then yes, that would be an obvious decision to anonym anonymously make a purchase agreement and name a stadium, a pretty big stadium. Yeah, but that's what I was saying when I said that. "fuck you, money, bro." Fuck you, money means that you have fact, enough money. What yeah. I would do is I would just create a a stadium naming contract with. Tom Brady, where it just follows him around and the stadium has to be renamed. Because I, I, that's what I'd want. I want the biggest star to always have the Dogecoin stadium. I would just build my own stadium, bro. <laughs> Probably cheaper. Well, I don't know about cheaper, but it'd be forever. Crypto.com is looking for the most unique branding platform to make a statement and drive adoption. And we're looking for an innovative forward thinking company, Staples Center, to help us chart a course for the future of sports and entertainment events aeg and crypto.com are still working out exactly how the far the partnership beyond the name will go but integrating cryptocurrency payments in the arena and online purchases may be on the horizon this, oh, is, look at that. this is los angeles times Visit, i think look honestly you visitors. know what it's it's la bro they like to be you know cutting edge in the front you know you know what i mean all that shit you know be yeah cool. you just wait you just wait yeah, I think they're going to do that. In fact, yeah, man. That, no, I, I'm telling you, you just wait to see what happens. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly. There's only, uh, if you pay attention look, to remember how Miami. the political divide falls amongst pro-crypto and against crypto, I think you'll find that anything in California will be, won't be too excited about cryptocurrency. 
like as yeah, a whole. but it's no, that's not true, man. Actually, it people like crypto a lot in, in Cali, a lot in LA, actually, and Miami too. So, like, the thing is, it's like Miami is also kind of trying to lead the way, you know, by being the first Bitcoin city and all this other shit. So, I wouldn't be surprised if LA, just like always, you know, we're always going back and forth those two cities on like the popular shit. You know what I mean? So they're trying to now say, "Fuck it, okay, we're gonna double down and see what we can do here." I mean, at least with their stupid stadium, we know you're right. You're right. Because they know that the local government is very anti all that stuff. So then, you know, like the, 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 you know, the people that own the stadium and shit like that, they say, well, fuck it. We'll do something that is cooler than whatever the fuck Miami's doing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people that go to the Staples Center, you know, they'll be able to pay with Dogecoin. You know what I mean? Or whatever. You know what I mean? Look at like, this. So- look at this. Look at this. Visitors will see one clear change at the entrance of the arena from LA Live, adjacent to the statue of Magic Johnson, where 3,300 square feet will become a dedicated Crypto.com activation space, featuring crypto-centric interactive experiences for sports or music bands. Crypto.com has also signed with the Lakers and Kings as their official crypto partner. Whoa. Cool. cool. No wonder this coin shot up 30% yesterday. What's the market cap on this bitch? They got, oh, that's they're, cool, they're, they're making moves. I mean, everyone yeah. else in this crypto space makes promises. And these guys just actually, for not even that expensive, anybody could have done this. Tron. Tron. Could have done yeah, this. But remember, and this is an actual, but, the, but crypto.com is like, they actually, they actually have like a, like an ecosystem. I, they have a, for example, they're they're like they're like Coinbase. I mean, they got a wallet, they got an exchange, they got all kinds of shit. The storied venue got its original name in December of 1997. You go, by the way, you should go to the website when you're done there, so you can just show people a little bit. When the then booming Staples Inc. paid 100 million dollars for the rights for 10 years. That was in 1997. Okay. He, uh, somebody Beckerman, who was the chief financial officer, said that. Wow. The arena. Uh, the value of the name was less of a sure thing back then. When we were selling the arena, nobody knew what it was. Nobody knew what it could be. Downtown was very different than downtown is today. But after Staples Center became the home of the Lakers, squads that Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal led to three consecutive national championships in the early 2000s. After the downtown district around the center developed into a revived tourist and residential district, and after the venue became frequent host of major events such as the Grammys, the Grammys, Jose. Hey, Brent. <laughs> it's the place in the city's cultural. Its place in the city's cultural landscape is solidified. Staples signed a deal in 2009 for naming rights in perpetuity, but AEG bought the naming rights back. For an undisclosed sum in 2019. Wow. Yeah, that's very interesting. That yeah, is I interesting. Mean, to, to buy to me, the, right man, I'm telling you, the whole crypto.com and being in LA and the whole thing, man, that's uh, that, that's a big move, man. Like in the sense of like, I mean, for even for the crypto space. And look, right now, crypto, Bitcoin, you know, whatever, I don't know if we were going to talk about it or not, but it's taking a major dump. And to me, it's like, yeah, man, because the pump, man, you know, like we're, we're going to be seeing some really crazy all-time highs. And it's just because it's just one thing after another like this. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about the dump or experience. No, yeah, exactly. No, buy the dip, man. Yeah. Buy that fucking dip. Get With out of here. 10 million users and 3,000 employees, Crypto.com is a major player in the crypto world. Uh, doubt. No. Well, anyways, they should be crypto.com. Well, they're about to be a little bit more, but I mean, they made a great move right here. I'll tell you that. Its core business is running an exchange that allows users to trade cryptocurrencies, store them in an online account, and access them with a Visa Rewards debit card. But it also has an NFT wing, cryptocurrency payment software, and its own token, and a number of other products in the works. Uh, Mars declined to share specifics but said that the company reached profitability in early 2021. Wow. He just, the company just became profitable this year. That's weird. (laughs) Way to go, dude. Imagine, I mean, imagine if your company just became profitable this year. Talk about a hell of a year. 
And now yeah, that's so now crazy. You're purchasing like, Staples Center. Yeah, that's so crazy. Like right now, I'm uh, I'm looking at the. I just look at the a thing is like the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges, right? And it's not. It's like I, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a lot above it. Oh my god! Like I still don't see Crypto.com anywhere. What's the market cap? Let's I don't think Crypto.com is an exchange. I wonder what are they. I don't see an exchange here. Do I? No. Oh yeah, they have an exchange. Okay, they have an exchange. They got wallet. They got an ecosystem. Supposedly, they got cards, man, like Visa cards or whatever. Mm. Huh. But damn, I mean, if they could just drop, that's not even that much. Huh. All right, crypto.com, crypto.com coin. Here it is. We are ranked number 17. Oh, really? Interesting. Oh, wow. We're actually down 10% today. Never mind. No, I promise you guys. Wait, you're an investor or something? Or? No. We keep saying we. <laughs> oh. It's French. We, we. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, actually. We, we. Here's the last seven days. Here's what happened after the naming rights came out. Oh, wait a minute, look at that. It's on Ethereum. It's an ERC20 token. <gasps> yeah, no. <laughs> no. Is it, it really? It's a scam. You know what? This is probably the FBI. They're setting this thing up for a big scam. Like, it's going to scam a lot of people out of a lot of money. And then it's going to be like, to crash look the whole how thing. dangerous cryptocurrency is. This it, it company. The stadium. Yeah. They they became <gasps> widely adopted, and then pulled the rug. No, Think I about believe it. It's possible. What? It's an ERC twenty token. Look, fucking playing fucking uh, uh playing fucking uh, Mrs. Drew here, or whatever. What is it, Nancy Drew? This is ridiculous, honestly. Get the fuck out of it. I'm conf- I'm- This website doesn't even look really that great. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, crypto that kind of so scammy as fuck. I mean, I got. I guess the app looks fine. The app looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look that doesn't look that good. It doesn't look. No, that what good. I want to see is the how how much they what's their what you want to call it crypto. What is it what their volume is? is what I'm crypto. I do like how they have cards like Visa cards. That's a pretty cool partnership though, dude. Dogecoin could use that. And I'm just, like Binance. What are you doing? Can you please pick up your game? Can, can you give us the Dogecoin debit card? Okay, it says they do three billion. Partner with Visa, the the banking three, system. They do three billion a, um, a day. Wait, three billion or yeah, three billion? Binance does three billion like before break. Yeah, three and a quarter billion a day. Binance does twenty six billion a day. Yeah. Just so you know. And Binance is over there. They're probably sitting in their high. Well, where are they? They're smart. So they're probably. Well, but I mean, I, no, I mean, we're just but saying. We, I mean, Binance is over there. And I'm telling you, they were talking about what just happened. And they're thinking to themselves. Yeah, you know. It's a nice move. But, uh, you know, pretty stupid. So launch in 2019. <laughs> yeah, the exchange. Brand. Yeah, no, the exchange. I think crypto.com has been around a lot. I'm sure the URL has been around for quite a while. To me, it's the insane part of what they are and what they did. Do you get what I'm saying? That's all. This is like pets.com doing this. Yeah, it looks like it. But but this could succeed, though. I'm just, I'm not saying. No, no, this is going to be a Well, well, hold on. Part of making something like this succeed, believe it or not, a lot of it has to do with marketing and what they did is genius. The fact that crypto.com yeah. is able what it was able to pull this off. Wow. I will I, I, will, say, I will say that's to me the most impressive thing of all. That's period. true. Yeah, they I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, they, they apparently from Singapore made negotiations and closed a deal with one of the largest arenas in the United States, the world superpower United States. So yeah, I mean like that's impressive in a year. It almost is suspicious. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe you're doing conspiracy theory on this one, but. Well, actually, I just do conspiracy theories when I think it makes sense. And this one, this one's odd. This one is odd. Yeah, I mean, again, that would not surprise me. And it could happen. But I mean, crypto.com has been around for a while. I mean, crypto.com. 
think about how scammy that like you're right it does sound old you right you have in the beginning yeah yeah but but it's i thought it was it sounds it sounds like mm -hmm. that because it's from the dot-com bubble that's what it sounds like it sounds like the dot-com bubble and then to realize that they just purchased that url and slapped it on something in 2019 yeah, crypto.com like, crypto has been around, I think, longer than that. Like, I think the exchange, oh, so what it says there, the exchange and the token are from 2019. But they would have been around before that. As what? A coin? As an ERC-20 token, bro? <laughs> yeah, they're still an well, ERC-20. Who cares about that? Literally nobody cares. I'm They're advertising themselves as a crypto exchange. I can't believe that. I mean, to me, it's wow. It's very, very wow. Because hey, you, you know think, what's interesting? I'm just saying because you would think that they would have their own, um, co uh, what is it, their own coin from their own blockchain because they have their own exchange? You know what's know. interesting? That Man, I can't believe this. Uh, this is very... Hey, hey. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that company started in 2019 out of Singapore, became Singapore's largest trading platform. Why can't you do the same thing in Mexico? Explain yourself. I don't you, want to. Well, they only started in 2019, and apparently they had so few competition that they just became Singapore's largest crypto trading platform. Okay, look, uh, crypto.com was funded. Founded, founded, uh, June 2016. Crypto.com is a trademark of Forest Dax MT Limited, a company incorporated in Malta, providing a cryptocurrency exchange app. The company was founded by Bobby Bao, Gary Orr, Chris Merzilic, and Rafael Melo. None of those guys sound Singaporean. Um, um, in 2016, as Monaco. Monaco! Yeah, I remember them. Okay, and headquartered in Singapore. And ex the exchange... Wow, okay. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah, so they've been... A Monaco was this company that was promising a um, a card, a way to get your crypto on a, on a card and then making that... They did you know, it. You remember that, right? I don't know. Yeah, but didn't you just see their website? That's what they did. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. But they just they they then they said, "Fuck it, we'll call it Crypto.com." Okay, so they're not scammy. They just sound scammy as fuck. I think they need to change their name, but obviously that's not they're, they're not doing that at all. They're doing the complete opposite. Um, but wow, this is interesting as fuck. Okay, in 2021, the company purchased the naming rights. Okay, they obviously the Staples Center. Um, the name change takes effect on then. Okay, da da da. They also sponsor Formula One, um, Formula One Series A, UFC, and oh, they um, they oh, and uh, what you might call it in um, Paris Saint Germain Football Club, you know soccer, the Paris soccer team, and the Montreal Canadiens. Look at that. So this guy, yeah. So these guys are not stupid. These guys are not fucking Asian. All right, they're based out of Asia because they're not. They had this. That's you know, they were in, actually the company is actually incorporated in Malta, but it's headquartered in Singapore. So these guys are fucking. These guys are white guys, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, cool. No, I mean it gives more validity, more way more validity to 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 them and the company and everything that they're doing. It seems like they just spread pretty thin, but. Fuck it, you know what I mean? You only live once, <laughs> and you yeah, only, exactly. yeah. And there's only one crypto.com. They got that. That's going right. There. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, fuck. I mean, Bitcoin. You know who owns? Okay, so you yes. know who owns Bitcoin.com, right? Yes, Bitcoin Cash. Exactly. Roger Ver owns Bitcoin.com. That guy. So remember, he was one of the early guys and he fucking bought Bitcoin.com and he now uses it for fucking uh, to shill his fucking big Bitcoin well, what cash. What else would he do? Yeah. I mean, you can't. I don't, yeah, I don't blame, blame him. I don't blame what, him. I don't... Is he supposed to set up some merchandise store for Bitcoin? <laughs> hey guys, I'm just like the biggest retail merchandiser. I'm like, uh, what is he going to do? Try to create some stylish brand around Bitcoin? It's fucking hilarious, though. So. Fucking guys, I don't know that. what the whales expected him to do with that website. Yeah. I know I don't know when he bought the website because maybe if he bought it like with the full maybe he, he 
When did he buy that website? Or did he get the naming right? Yeah, but I'm at the website now, and it's just funny because it's like, what is Bitcoin? And it's all like Bitcoin Cash. It's like, bro, what? Yeah. It's so scammy, That's bro. That's weird. Okay. It. It's, like, like, you know what? it's kind of set up like a Matt Beasley website. <laughs> like, it is. Like, you know. It's like scams. It's, it's presenting you with questions that you might be interested in, and then it's presenting his product as, as, as Dude, a Dude, like, I'm going to tell you, man. Like, I get it. Like, I don't got a problem with Bitcoin Cash. You know what I mean? The problem is I got a problem with how he markets it you know what i mean how he tries I have, to fucking... i have the same problem you know what i mean like imagine it's pepsi but they instead like when they're selling it you know like they they lie to you by telling you it's coke you well, know I, yeah exactly i had the same problem my only problem with shiba inu coin was the same thing where it's like they're lying to people saying it's doge and elon musk's favorite <laughs> coin and it's like okay you guys can be shiba inu coin you can be based off of anything you want you can be a meme but you can't say that you're you know elon musk's favorite coin if you're not and they still say that even after Elon Musk comes out and says, Hey, I don't own any of, them. I own Doge, Ethereum and Bitcoin, but Shiba Inu, unfortunately built their fame off of doing the same thing. And now they get what they deserve. And, uh, let me take a look at it. Shiba Inu is down to 42. Remember it was up to 88. They've lost over half their value already. Pretty bad. Yeah. Actually, when you Doge visit coin did the same thing. It's funny when you visit Bitcoin.com. Actually, I gotta give them credit. They changed it. Okay, they changed it now. So now the Bitcoin is kind of front and center, but they have a video explaining why Bitcoin Cash is better. But Bitcoin is Bitcoin, and then they just they just now it's it's like okay, you're on Bitcoin.com and welcome. You know, for any newbies that type Bitcoin.com, you know, you're definitely a boomer. So welcome. Um, so this is Bitcoin and it's great. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of things about it. You know what they're hey, like? They're like, but hey, I got something better. It's called Bitcoin Cash. And you know what? They designed the website to kind of look like an external, great. no, kind of like an external Facebook page. Like people are coming directly yeah. from their Facebook profile. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. <laughs> Hello, yeah. boomer. Welcome to Bitcoin.com. Yeah, <laughs> you can kinda, sign in over here. It is a little shady, though. I'll tell you that. That's not. It's funny. It is funny, though. Oh. <clears throat> it's fine. Let's read the comments. Hey, that's it for that segment. We went way too long on that one. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, that was a segment? Penny. I don't upload them anymore, so <laughs> we'll see Great. about that. Great job. Well, that's a 40 minute segment. Nobody cares about this. Well, maybe. Yeah, man, we got to do one minute segments, man. Yeah, I know. That's way too long of a segment right there. Earlier, when we were talking about, I don't know what the fuck, we were just. Uh, CNN? We got to do clips, man. Like snippets. Snippets. I can't. I can't do that. We need people to help us out there. Any volunteers that want to help us produce the show? I got the, you crickets, know how to I got the cricket sound effect coming up. You know, yeah, exactly. Right. And you know how to reach us. <laughs> Yeah, I got the scream. And don't jump. No, all jump in at once, right? But if anyone helps, wants to help us, if anyone wants to help us, um, we will be very happy and glad and thankful and appreciative. Uh, help with what? What are we asking them for again? To help us uh, produce the show. Like, help us uh, make clips and shit. Hey, can somebody design a uh, Let's Go Brandon t-shirt? I, I want to that. buy one. I can do that. You could I'll give you guys a free t-shirt if you help. How's it? Hey, everybody, we're going to give away free t-shirts for the end of the year. So if you're like familiar with this show, just uh, stay watching because we're about to give out a link and you're going to um, basically just put any mailing address. doesn't have to be yours. And we're going to send you a t-shirt. Just put your size in there. And we'll get you a shotgun or a spaghetti news t-shirt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stick around. All right. Yep. Are they still there? You stuck around. Yay. Thanks. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Next story. Here we are. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Move this. Move. So excited. By the way, so what is the next story? Little Caesars has unveiled, speaking of clothing, Little Caesars unveiled a line of pizza theme merch. Uh, during a photo shoot in Milan, Michigan. By the way, sweet city name, Milan, Michigan. That's awesome. That is a great city name. 
That's like uh, Paris, Nebraska. Or London, Oklahoma. <laughs> Anyways, Detroit, Michigan. Little Caesars isn't just a pizza chain. It's part of the culture. Its founders... By the way, they really are. They own the... You know the Detroit... Uh, what's the NHL hockey team for Detroit? I think they're the Detroit... No, the Detroit Wings or something. They have a wing. The Red they, Wings. The Red Wings. Red Wings. They got a new stadium, and it's Little Caesars Arena, and it's actually pretty sweet. Oh, like, awesome. Well, you know, Little Caesars is from Detroit originally. Yeah, but let me go ahead and f let me pull up Little Caesars Arena. You're going to love it. Little Caesars too. is, I love it. Well, you're going to love their arena even better. Even better than the pizza, because this, this stadium is nice. Look at it. Check it out. Got glass ceiling. Oh, can I get a photo of it? It's a nice hockey stadium. Got, uh, okay, I wish I could get you like the best photo, but it's, it's I got like, I mean, dude, this thing is like, uh, pretty sweet. Got the Caesar on the top. Glass, oh, wow. glass ceiling. No, but it's one of the newest stadiums in the NHL. It was unveiled in 2018, I think. Oh, wow. So the Little Caesars build it or something? Or? They, well, they recently, yeah, they, I think so. And they just, uh, they just, oh, wow, that's cool. Or they just, uh, did they build it or they just uh, put the naming rights? I think they just put the naming rights on it, obviously. <laughs> the sports team in the city are usually the ones that have to buy it. All right. Yeah. But still, they help buy it by putting the naming rights on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Pretty cool, cool, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Little Caesars all day. I mean... So anyway, hey, by the way, and before we move on too much, let me tell you my favorite piece of merchandise. Okay, okay. the stocking cap. I just I'm counting like hot and ready. You got to get your girl a stocking cap that says hot and ready. <laughs> that's the coolest stocking cap out of all of the merchandise. That's probably my favorite. A stocking cap that says hot and ready. That's pretty. Sweet. I like the colors too, bro. They're kind of very. Uh, they're very. Uh... Um, what is it like, uh, Cleveland brownish? Mm, yeah, like I can't. I'm not gonna wear a pizza. Like any of the other merchandise, honestly, isn't as cool. But the stocking cap is probably the coolest one. I get her that. I'm gonna get her that. Hot and ready. I'm gonna get me the pepperoni book bag. No, actually, yeah. the Little Caesars, uh, the pillow. I like that pillow. Sensible shoes. Yeah, they are. They seem like sensible. It just depends on pricing. But you know, Hot and Ready, the Zoomers are going to be all over that. A little Caesars hat that says Hot and Ready. They know exactly what they're doing. It's yeah, I'm all over that shit, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Scrolling down. It's part of the culture. It's I, want my little Caesars, I want my little Caesars fucking uh, merch right now. Did, they, they, did I see a little notebook? A little pizza pepperoni notebook there? Something like that right here. A lot of throw pillows. Like you could just, I guess if you have like, I don't know why you'd want that, but you could put some throw pillows on this modern looking couch and have a little bit of little Caesar. And you, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Like the throw pillows are cool. I like throw pillows. I wonder if they got other throw pillows. Yeah. Oh, I noticed this published at 4:20 p.m. Oh yeah, today. Which yes, is one of our next stories. Right? That's right. Two days ago. Um, its founders. The professional teams play at the Little Caesars Arena. If you go to, Mich uh, go to a Michigan city of a notable size, there's a pretty good chance you'll find somewhere to get uh, hot and ready. That's not th to say that the chain, one of the largest in the United States, doesn't have its detractors, but Little Caesars has a cult following, especially yeah. in Michigan. And now oh. fans can rep the brand wherever they go. Beginning this week, consumers nationwide can visit hotandreadyshop.com to browse the variety of saucy merchandise fresh yeah, off man, they, they have the little crazy Caesar's bread oh, catwalk. Yeah, dude, they got, sorry, sorry, they got, I didn't mean to interrupt, I apologize. No, but yeah, they have it out here. They have a Little Caesars uh, out here and it's my favorite American pizza. Pizza Hut sucks Whoa. out here. Domino's is terrible, but Little Caesars, mwah, fucking beautiful. <laughs> and they're here since they make it like really, like they really make it like, you know, more often than not, you can actually order like the deep dish or you can order like, uh, like the Supreme with all the ingredients, you know, and it's like so good. 
I'm on so their website. Good. Look, okay, so we're gonna look through the merchandise. Is that chick little lip chick over there look like uh she got a mustache? The fuck that, kind of like a goatee over here. Right? Some of that, bro. I don't know. But you have hot you have the holiday seasons, you have the by the way, the merch is pretty cheap, man. Yeah, See, they're smart, man. They no, know, they know that they just want you to wear it, so they're trying to make it as cheap as possible. Dude, look at this, look at this. A nice pullover warm thing with a little logo there. Only fifty bucks. It's pretty expensive. Hot and ready beanie. Twenty dollars. Come on now. That's, That's cheap, cheap, man. That's cheap, especially if they include shipping. They probably don't. Uh, pizza earrings. I feel like. Can you imagine they uh, ship it with a pizza? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Pizza That's earrings. Good. Very cool. Okay. A lot of items for good-looking women. Wrapping paper. Wow, look it's at awesome. all these designs. I can't believe that they have wrapping paper. They got full-on jumpsuits. They got pizza earrings. <laughs> I love that. Look at that. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's got his throw fellow. They got their pizza slice blanket. Hats. They have one hat. Jewelry. I gotta get. I gotta there's get Christian. A, yeah, there's I a, gotta get Christian that uh the blanket thing or whatever. And there's yeah. a neck. There's a necklace that says "Hot and Ready." And that that one actually is so hot, it's gone. There's out. They're out of. They're out of stock. Pin collection. Go crazy bracelet. So hot, it's gone. Beanie is still available for only twenty dollars. If you're looking for something for Christmas. Very excited. Home and office. Get that hot and ready gaming chair. No way. No way. Oh, that necklace is great. Hey, all of the Twitchers are going to be out there going and getting this chair. No, probably not. That's funny, though. The hot and ready gaming chair. That is amazing. <laughs> they know what they're doing. This was not built for just anybody. This was built for 225 bucks. Is that like one of those good gaming chairs? Like the, like the one that PewDiePie sells. Must be. If it is, I would buy it because I was thinking about getting one. And so I, if I could just get it with little seizures instead of like red, I would buy it in a hundred, like in a, in a heartbeat. Oh, here's an Xbox one controller and a PS4 controller. Oh, just the skin. Oh, okay. oh Cody would love that. Who wouldn't? Cody would love the fucking chair too, I bet. Dude, yeah, actually, now that I'm down that thinking about it, Cody, it's all about pizza, bro. Think about it. Think pizza about it. Merch. This is these are great. Let's look at the socks up close. Oh, wait, let me see the vintage t shirt. Go back. No, oh, I gotta go to the website, bro. <clears throat> what do you want? The vintage t shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back, go back. Oh wow, that's right here. Only fifteen dollars established in nineteen fifty nine. Yeah, man, that's a great shirt. Multiple colors, by the way. They even have a model wearing it. Very cool. I can't believe they have a button up with little pizza slices on it. Look at that. That's a good one too. I wear that. Yeah, it seems like something people would wear down in Mexico. I wear that shit fucking anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I just oh, I want that with the little pizza guy in the pocket. I want that one. Dude, this hot and ready hat is my favorite thing. All those here. shirts. I want all those Dude, shirts. Bro. The hot and ready hat is actually the one so that you, good. Did you see the shirt with the, the little guy in the pocket? Yeah, the hot and ready hot beans. Dude, I'm great. buying this hot and ready hat. That's amazing. You should get it, bro. You go, that way when you go to the gay bar, they know. <laughs> no. you're, you're ready. You're hot and you're ready. That's just an amazing hat. I love it. All right. I think it's a great hat. Was there more to this? I love you at the oh, game yeah. part. Here we go. Little Caesars is a cult brand that consumers want to be a part of. We're thrilled that people can show their brand love in the most Little Caesars way possible. Our inspiration was pizza so good you want to wear it. We're embracing the fact that Little Caesars has no place in high fashion, and that's exactly what people love about the brand. Items available include a pizza slice sleeping bag blanket, a crazy bread lounge set, a Little Caesars Sherpa, a button-down pizza shirt, slip-on sneakers, a hot-and-ready gaming chair, jewelry, socks, bags, pillows, and more. 
There are also holiday-specific pieces, including wrapping paper and Christmas ornaments. To kick off the launch, Little Caesars hosted a photo shoot at a Milan, Mich- um, Milan, Michigan store and transformed it into the ultimate hot and ready shop with mannequins dressed in neon orange wigs and looks curated from the merchandise line. Shoppers yeah. can find updates on the new merchandise drops throughout the year in accordance uh, with the changing more. seasons, holidays, and memorable moments. The collection was conceived in partnership with McKinney, Little Caesars Agency of Record. C-Y-L-N-D-R served as a production partner. That's awesome, man. They got, like, a, again, you know, like the fact that uh, they're going to keep dropping more merch. This is going to be so cool. And then they got something here, man. That's great. I'm gonna, I think I might be buying some things. I wonder how the shipping works to Mexico. Seriously. I want to buy some stuff from there. I'm thinking about the chair because I, I, I was going to get me a gaming chair. Don't and get the gaming it's, chair. If it's I'm cheap, absolutely certain you go on Amazon and get a better chair. No, no. More comfortable. A, no, that, I think that's the specific... I would like to check it, man. That might be the specifically. They might, I don't think they're gonna. I'll skip. tell you what, though. I they're probably gonna give you a good chair. I don't wait think a second. Give you some shitty was chair. today the episode I was supposed to go and buy certain types of vodka? Wasn't there a Burger King or some type of vodka that came out today? Vodka. Like uh, we covered it last week, and it's like oh, Arby's uh, French fry, curly vodka. fry vodka. Yeah, but you gotta order it online or something. Is that right? out? I mean, look, you keep talking. No, you gotta order it online. Remember? Yeah, I'm gonna look at this. See if it's out. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You tried, but it, it wasn't available yet, right? Well, I haven't tried it. I, I just know there was supposed to be a day this week. Yeah. Let's get it. Arby'sVodka.com. How can I? Uh, how can I attain one in Mexico? You can't unless I'm gonna cross the border with. That would be good, man. I think that that would be actually really good. It would. Be good. I'm on the website. That's great. Your favorite fries are now 80 proof. Sold out. Bro. Sold out. How the fuck are they sold out already? We're out of vodka, which is sad. But we still have 50% off any other sandwich when you create an account and order ahead at Arby's.com. Which yeah. is happy. Okay. Which is happy. Yeah, they're sold out. I'm sorry, everyone. Just remembered. Whatever. Yeah, but you can get fifty percent off on your Arby's next thing. Yeah. Hey, speaking of, let's wrap that segment. Who cares? Congratulations, Little Caesars. I'm happy as fuck, man. This is great that they named an arena Little Caesars. Is that what the segment was? Oh no, the merchandise. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that was a great ending there. <laughs> I ended it before. <laughs> oh man, why are you the worst? Man, we need a real. What am I producer. supposed to do? Just keep it out there? Maybe it was easier to say man. something funny. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. What kind of fucking timing was that, bro? I don't the know. Hell? You're fired, bro. Yeah. Fired. Didn't seem that important. We have to fire you, bro. We we need uh, anyone out there that wants to be the producer. Get with us. Hey, I was watching Mitch Ray earlier, and he was talking about Bitcoin, and it's just another one of those streams. I don't blame him, but it's just like, there's, you know, he's like, hey, dude, there's nothing to really tell you other than the market's red, and everything that we've been looking at is now wrecked because of what Bitcoin's doing right now. <laughs> you know, any formation that you were looking at, any bullish candle, or, you know, whatever, uh, scratch no, if you it, bought throw it, uh, it away, if you, scratch it, throw yeah, it that's away. Right. If you bought it at 67K, it was at this moment that he knew he <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, but right? you know what I'm talking about. Where it, those are always interesting streams to watch for that Mitch Ray does because he all he can do is basically just sit there and go, "Yep, like we're red and we could go down to here, but we could also bounce back up." But it's probably gonna end up down all the way down here. <laughs> Spaghetti news. I'm not sure how you feel about changing the name of your show that I had in the uh, mind. Just a thought. I think spaghetti. News, I think I like spaghetti news better. Yeah, we might change the show name eventually. We just have it all set up for spaghetti news as of right now. But we might spaghetti change. News is great. if we do change it, we're probably gonna go with something very simple, like like you suggested, Cody. Where I wonder why. I wonder why Cody hates 
spaghetti noodles. He doesn't. So much. He says, "I think I like spaghetti noodles." No. Oh, but technically, he's correct. Like, I feel like spaghetti news. The only limit on it is the fact that we still put news after our name, so it almost makes it like we gotta cover the news. And sometimes, you know, but we do knows. cover the you news. Know, yeah, I know, but sometimes we don't need to cover the news. Sometimes there's not news to cover. Yeah, we just so, talk about spaghetti. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if we should, if we were to change the name, we would definitely get the name news out of it. Because as much as we are the news, the news is garbage, guys. But so, but, it's not but dude, but we're above garbage. We're spaghetti. Yeah, so we're gonna keep it for now, for that exact. But, but the thing is that, like, I like I like the news because like it gives us something to talk about. Otherwise, what are we talking about? Oh, we just talk about me, things that are happening in my life. <laughs> no, you're right. We gotta talk about the news, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we always will talk about the news. Well, what else would we talk about? It's a good name. I mean, I don't know because like Jose and Tim show Tim and Jose or something. I don't know. That just sounds weird, bro. It sounds gay. Jose, Tim and Jose. Jose and Tim on PornhubLive.com. Right. Tim and Jose. Tim and Jose uh, on OnlyFans. All right. Can we read this article and just move on? Is that on? Britney Spears? Does she get fat? That's what she look like. Okay. So where's the... I don't know when we're covering this story. Oh, wait. We didn't. Wait. What? Can we get we're... the... Dude, CNN. I, I just... swear to God, when you put this on, I thought it was Barb. Britney Spears. A California we're... couple vanished. After stealing, this is our best story of the night. Vanished. Is it? After stealing millions in COVID 19 relief funds. They oh, wait. His, the guy's smile. Look at him. He's like yeah. smiling. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> they left a goodbye note for their three uh, kids. It's like, we out. We out this bitch. Richard Please. Zion. How do you pronounce that? He looks, it's Spanish. Let me see. Oh, I don't know. Richard. That's not, I don't know. He's like, I think he's like fucking Muslim, bro. No, you say that name. That's, that's not that's Hispanic, Spanish bro. Name. That's, I, hold on. Richard, I'm going to do that. You can't, really, that's not I Spanish? See, I, 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 wait, hold on. I guess it might be Muslim. I, 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 I don't know. No, Aiva. Aiva Zaybayana. I look Spanish to me. Is that what? Aiva Zayna. No, Zion. No, Avi, I know it. Aiva Zion. Aiva it's, Zion. No, it's. Richard uh, Ivazan. It's Ivazan, but you don't know how to pronounce things, I guess. Is it Ivazan? Yeah. It's like a fucking uh, like a medicine that you would take like, it. Like it an does. Like it an like a, this is this was part of Pfizer's something. Yeah. Okay. You, what was it called again? What's the name again? Ivazan. I. Ivazan. Uh, Baz Yan. Yeah. Have you taken? Uh, have you asked your doctor for Ivazan? <laughs> <laughs> Marita Talberton did. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, we're facing prison for the. By the way, that's a clip right there, bro. Oh, thanks. You just ended it. No, no, no. But like, uh, the way you want to interrupt me a little said, bit more? Wait, you tell said, me about the clip. No, no, when you said Marita Trabazan is, that's it. Boom. That's a clip. And so we just make our way back from there. All right. Thanks for interrupting the show, Jose. That's okay. It's okay. It's not like anyone's listening anyway. But if we make those clips, yeah, our entire people live will listen. Audience is listening. People will listen. People okay, listen. Richard, whoever, we're facing prison. Oh, no, Richard role. Ivazan. Yeah, we're facing prison for their role in a massive COVID relief fraud scheme when they cut off their electronic tracking bracelets <laughs> and fled their California home. So they cut off their electronic tracking. Oh, braces. so they were in house arrest. Yeah. Abandoning their three. But why were they in house arrest? Oh, you, because you listen, of the COVID listen? relief shit. Of the COVID stuff. Okay. It says they were facing prison for their role in a massive COVID relief fraud. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But when they cut off their electronic tracking bracelets and fled their California home, abandoning their three teenage children. They left a typewritten note for their kids, ages 13, 15, and 16. Saying, hey, guys, watch Malcolm in the Middle. You'll be fine. We will be together again one day, it read, <laughs> according to Ivazan's attorney. This is not goodbye, but a brief break from each other. This was late August, almost three months later and five months after their convictions in June. The couple still have not been found. The FBI is searching for them. 
That didn't stop a judge this week from sentencing Ivizen, 43, and Terabellion, 37, to 17 and 6 years in prison, respectively. You're definitely, they're definitely not showing up. They're definitely not showing up. Prosecutors said they and others carried out a scheme to steal more than $20 million in relief funds intended for small businesses. The defendants used the COVID-19 crisis to steal millions of dollars in much-needed government aid intended for people and businesses suffering from the economic effects of the worst pandemic in this century. I'm, I mean, obviously the fraud is wrong, but this language... Yeah, I wouldn't be such surprised. A, such a state prosecutor type language. This, you know, they, they try to steal millions in much-needed right. aid intended for businesses suffering. They stole money from the government, okay? Yeah, and I wonder there how much are they, many people that do oh, that. Hold on, hold on. I wonder how much they actually stole because the reality is it twenty million, but that's a bunch of that between a bunch of people. So who knows how much they actually got? Another federal prosecutor said that their case was one of the first of its kind in the nation to go to trial. They stole money, fueled a lavish. Oh, the stolen money fueled a lavish lifestyle. Here we go. <laughs> the couple and. Ivazan's brother Arthur or Artur did things like buy you like a you like, you know did such lavish things as buy a a used Nissan Sentra a 2008 yeah. Nissan Sentra um, taking their kids to the movies. They also and, went to Disneyland, a rare <laughs> 2002 relic. Okay, we're, we're found song. guilty of conspiracy to commit bank fraud wire fraud, and money laundering at a trial in June. Richard Ivazan and his brother were also convicted of aggravated identity theft. According to court documents and evidence presented at trial, so all they had to do, because I, you know, like I'm familiar with how small businesses, because I happen to own a small business, got funding through this small business thing. I didn't get that much. Like, uh, but a, hey, real well, quick, look, look how funny! Look how funny that when small criminals steal your identity and 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 then uh, take you know what is it like uh, scam the government out of some money, they get twenty years in prison. But when a corporation does it, they get bailouts <laughs> or they get what is it? They get fucking uh, tax breaks. Yeah, that's just whatever. natural, man. I mean, I'm sorry, but that just that just happens. Anyways, just uh, yeah, that's just the. I mean, sorry, that's the food chain. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just wanted to, just throw it out there. What do you want? Small businesses to get bailed out by the government too? No. Nope. Oh, I want, uh, I want the government to not get involved. Period. In the story. Yeah, but uh, if it's in the interest of, like, let's say American Airlines, Delta, and Sprint would have all went bankrupt during the pandemic, like we would good, have no good. more air travel. Do you think that would be good for America to have all? Like, no, because all we would just air have travel. No, like, suddenly no, it's no, like no, no. crypto.com airplanes are up in the sky. <laughs> Exactly. We would only have no air travel for a little bit of time until other people got their shit together and then new airlines would come out of like nothing because all these airplanes would be for sale. All this industry is in need. There's tons of millionaires out there that would love to get in the industry. You have any yeah, idea it would be how... awesome. It would have been awesome, actually. That's capitalism. But since there's no capitalism, you know what I mean? Know. The government bails them out because the government owns the airlines. Because they could have been want awesome. You, they it want you to stick that I mean, thing. It definitely up your would nose. have been a shakeup. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. And I don't yeah. know if it necessarily would have benefited the people to have that shakeup, but yes, I, I think would have. It would have. It would have. A hundred percent. I don't think so. Because yeah, because then why? You, so you suddenly have crypto.com running an airplane industry, which they've never. Yeah, ran it could before. be anybody. It could be fucking Hanson.com, bro. It doesn't. I'm just saying, like, I don't think that ben, that benefits nobody. How does that what? benefit anybody? You know what it does? Wait, wait, wait. Let me hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're gonna tell me that it would not be beneficial to anybody all of a sudden if American Airlines disappears and all of a sudden, like a new, a bunch of new airlines like Spirit Airlines come up around. You know, airlines that you know actually have the intent. No, I don't know if it's because... Spirit. I don't know if it's Spirit or Southern. What? Well, anyways, forget it. Forget it's Spirit. Anyways, let me let me let me let me go back. Let's just okay. Imagine that an airline, like places like a United Airlines and American Airlines, you know, would fucking disappear. These very horrible, corrupt 
airlines, they would disappear. And all of a sudden, new, right, like almost overnight, new companies would arise. And they would be instead of two companies, they would be like maybe 10 companies. Um, but then all of a sudden, they would buy up all the, you know, real estate, the whether it's of airplanes, the routes, the whole thing. And then yeah, there would be a little bit of cr craziness for a couple months until you know everything got settled but at the end of the day now you're going to have these airlines that are all now going to announce 10 instead of two and these 10 no, are trying to hold the on they're trying to grow right. they're trying to grow and they're trying to do what's best again for the customer because they, they want to go the, the other best. way it would be one airline purchasing the rest of them that's all it would be you would just have a monopoly that's all no you no, no no that, that's only when bailed out when bailouts happen no, that's only when bailouts happen. But if you let no. the whole system crash like it's supposed to, then then that's what would happen because that's what always happens in capitalism. Let's continue, but I think we dis let's agree to disagree. Look, Frank, no, I, the, no. I, I, all I'm saying is the problem of too big to fail does exist. Now, there should be, and this is a very boring topic considering. Like for example, know, let me just give you. Interrupt. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to give the, you an example. The, the like concept of another country in another country with there an airline. There it goes, man. It just interrupts and continues. All right, go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead okay, go ahead. the concept of too big to fail does exist and is a real problem. The only problem that we have to deal with is that, as like, or that our government should deal with, is it should not be incentivized at all. It should be very punished if you have to have somebody step in and solve a too big to fail problem. There is no promise that the government should ever step in and solve uh, for the interest of its people, a private organization's dealings. But if they do, well, then maybe there should definitely be some type of like, dude, I don't know, but something that would be in, like a punishment for that business. Not government ownership, but maybe, hey, top ring of every single department, you're gone and you got no pension package anymore. That's just, I mean, if you needed to ask your government for help, and for you know the american people have their best interest for you guys to exist but at the same time now you can't exist and you should be going bankrupt and just failing and selling off well we'll save you for the interest of the american people but the top line of leadership all three managements down and everything else you guys are are completely out of and then ideally like with no golden blanket or golden parachute but i don't know yeah, and like in other countries, you know, what they do is that like they have like, you know, just thinking there's laws and regulations like, for example, in one country, you know, uh, that I know of, you know, they have uh, th these laws, you know, that basically say that, you know, you're when you're flying, you're allowed, you know, because, you know, if, you know, to, you're allowed to have some sort of uh, what you might call it, like carry on by law, you know, what I mean, in the sense that like, you know, hey, you know, you're flying, you should not be charged for your carry-ons because, you know, hey, you know, it's not, it's not, that's something, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be charged for that, you know what I mean? Just for a lot of reasons, you know what I mean? And so, whatever, it is what it is, that's the law. And so, certain airlines out here in, in, in this country, um, all of a sudden, they stopped, you know, um, they, they stopped, the was it, respecting that law. They started breaking that law, and they started forcing people last minute to pay for the extra carry on or for the extra this or the extra that when when by law they're not supposed to so the government said hey we're going to give you a warning because you guys are big companies and we don't you know want to ruffle you know we don't want to fuck shit up but if you guys don't start complying by this by this date you know we're going to start fining you and even closing down terminals so anyways the date came the, the, the airline still did whatever the fuck they wanted. And they, you know what they did? The government came in, you know, the, like the BBA, the, was it the, the, the government's version of like the better business bureau or whatever, you know, you know, some shit like that. They came in and they fucking basically shut them down for illegal practices. It's like, no, listen, again, you're not supposed to do this. So now since you are, you know, being petty and fucking charging motherfuckers for these bags that you're not supposed to be charging. Well, you know what? Now, nobody, Nobody gets to fly. Nobody, I mean, nobody gets to not, you know, like buy more tickets or use this terminal, do this and that, things like that. And they get not only fined, but they play pay a penalty. And so, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's an inconvenience, but not only are the people happy, but like the people actually get like a resolve and, and the company gets reprimanded. 
just like any other company that breaks any other law would get re reprimanded. You know what I mean? Just because you're too big doesn't mean that you're you're too big to get punished or or fail or anything like that. So I don't know. To me, you know, again, they learned their lesson. You know what I mean? Now, you know, again, they don't charge motherfuckers anymore. You mm -hmm. feel me? Okay. So I don't know. To me, you know, I, I'm fine with Let's that. Let's move on I'm with like, the article, yeah. Jose. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh I'm going to drink my fucking name wanna... here. According to yeah, I just keep drinking. According to court documents and I'm evidence, not drinking, by the way. I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic. Yeah. I'm not drinking. I'm not really not drinking. Not According sure. to court documents, <laughs> if you have to tell people you're not drinking, no, not because you just said I'm drinking hot chocolate. I know what it's like. Hey, I'm not drinking, by the way. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. Nah, okay. okay, these are marshmallows. According to my... court documents and evidence, Wait, I'm not when I'm winking. When I'm winking so much at that, I'm not saying that it's not that it is that it's not. It's just yeah. Okay, like going into court documents. According to court documents and evidence <laughs> presented at trial, they used fake or stolen identities, including the names of dead people and foreign exchange students who briefly visited the U.S. years ago. So they got some, you know, foreign or some illegal IDs or whatever, some fake IDs. To submit fraudulent applications for approximately 150 uh, federal pandemic relief loans for sham businesses in the San Fernando County, Valley County. To support the fraudulent loan applications, they submitted fake identity documents along with falsified tax forms. So they just papered it all together. You know, just makes sense because all you got to do is submit a bunch of paperwork. So they just made it all up. Uh, identify fake identity documents. And by the way, they, this probably took a lot of time for them to assemble. To support the fraudulent loan applications, they submitted fake identity documents along with falsified tax forms and payroll records to lenders and the small business, the SBA. The couple, along with uh, I. Vizan's brother and five co-conspirators, Use the money to buy mansions in three South California cities. While they stayed in California, they bought three mansions. What are they doing? Uh, so they bought them in Tarzana, Glendale, and Palm Desert, along with gold coins, diamonds, furniture, luxury watches, and a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Richard, yeah, they, they kind of fucked up. I mean, they kind of were looking to get arrested. Yeah, Richard Ivazan of Tarzan, California, seen outside the courthouse at his June trial. By the way, I, when I lived in LA, I used to live right by Tarzan. He was sentenced to 17 years in federal prison for fraudulent application for emergency government loans. Damn, this guy fucked up in 2020, dude. <laughs> you want to see somebody who fucked up? This guy just got sentenced for 20 yeah, years. I think he might be my, yeah, he's, uh, who knows where the fuck he is. No, he's, this guy didn't run away. This is his brother. Wait a second. Is that his brother? Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. This was when he, okay, I got you. No wonder he ran away. So this was after he was sentenced, and then they gave him apparently like a bracelet. No, uh, yeah, anybody would try to run away, dude. 17 years? Yeah. When they were convicted, they had to forfeit three houses and luxury items along with bank accounts and approximately $450,000 in cash. What's amazing is that this guy and his attorney or whoever actually went through the whole court process. <laughs> you know? Like, come on. If you know you're guilty, you should flee before then. What are you doing embarrassing yourself in front of the judge? Uh, sir, all the 150 companies were real. Yeah. The state yeah. is lying to you, people. They're trying to convict an innocent man. If you're in this situation, you gotta start like do what Donald Trump always recommends, which is just throw sling mud at the wall. You gotta start saying everything. Like this, if you're in front of a jury trial, you gotta say like this judge has a problem because I slept with his sister, and he's mad about it. And now he's making this up. I can't imagine another way to get out of it. When our nation was at its most vulnerable, these individuals thought about lining their own pockets. These sentences, come on. I could change that sentence. When our nation was at its most vulnerable, Democrats thought only about positioning for their own power. Whoa! <laughs> Controversial. Controversial, Jose. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These sentences reflect the seriousness of these crimes. It's unclear whether Richard masterminded the scheme, but of the eight people convicted, he was handed by far the longest sentence, 17 years. Nobody else was sentenced to more than six years. His brother, Artur, got five years. At sentencing on Monday, Richard Iveson was called a endemic, cold-hearted fraudster with no regret, no regard for the law. After what we've seen happen in this country over the past year, nobody has regard for the fucking law, dude. Like, I don't want to defend this guy any more than I have to, but this is ridiculous the way these people characterize others who are who get a little too greedy and i'm not defending stuff. these guys fuck these guys bro these guys are fucking dirt bags bro right but at the same time to to characterize them as no regard for the law it it, it implies that everyone who doesn't get the sentence does have regard for the law and nobody has regard for the law anymore this these people just took way too much and were way too sloppy that's really what happened here and shouldn't have taken sloppy. anything at all okay you should just earn your money the correct way. Okay. <laughs> I forgot I was on a show. Hey, Ryan, I, was, I forgot I was on a show. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> do it legally. It. Only legally. Okay? No, I mean, they did it legally. They just did it sloppily. No, they did not do it legally. And they no, should. it was not legal. Oh, yeah, that's right. They stole identities. Yeah, they had a bunch of identities and everything else. Okay. Identities steal. Don't that steal identities. That's no good. No, but like, we all know that people steal identities for lots of things. Okay. That's right. That's right. So, like when you sign up for your Facebook account. Yeah, or like when you're um, voting. I mean, when you're, there's so many examples. When If you're voting or if you're, right now you, some people are getting vaccine passports um, that, you know, aren't real. And then there's a bunch of different. Anybody methods. doing that. But you blend all these things together and these guys just did, these guys are just stupid in too many ways at once. That's right. Because they did the passport, or they did the fake ID thing, and they mixed it with mm. a lot of money. They did 150 businesses. They did fa fake tax documents. Okay, and which nobody does, by the way. No, like I don't know many fraudsters who would start piecing together tax documents and submitting them to the government. Yes, that's pretty far out. Okay. So wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. We got more. The couple's three children were in the courtroom to witness their parents and uncle being sentenced. Oh, jeez. Why would they do that? That's great. Ivazin's lawyer said Very that... Very traumatizing. We're making sure that they burn that shit into their retinas, you know, through their, through their <laughs> yeah. fucking... Make sure they never forget. Even though maybe if... Make sure they're traumatized. I bet you know the mean? defense... If I, was de if I was a defense trial, like, if I was a defense attorney, I would actually want them to be there because I'd say, you made one mistake... Don't take these people, these kids as parents from their children for too long. Okay. It was one mistake. It was 2020. The world appeared to be falling apart. And the parents, they did some stupid things. But you can't take their father away for 25 years. Okay. Look at the little kid. Look at the little kid. Oh, they gave him fucking uh, house arrest. Yeah. The whereabouts of Richard and Martial uh, remain unknown. The FBI is is offering twenty thousand. Marietta, bro, Marietta. Yeah, the FBI is offering a twenty thousand dollar reward. Ooh, big spenders over here. Then twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollar reward. Hey, shit. For information regarding their arrest. Oh, jeez. Sure, you guys can't muster up anything more than that. Ashwin. Might as well be offering 20 bucks, bro. Yeah. Shit. Ashwin, an attorney. That's not even one third of a Bitcoin. <laughs> On a Man. red day. Seriously, bro. Ashwin. What kind of shit is that, yeah. bro? <laughs> we are literally. That's an insult, bro. That's we, like are, an we, are, we are rats to them, you know? Hey, throw them 20K. They'll sell out whoever they're friends with for 20,000. What are you. This is ridiculous. By the way, I don't know where they are, so I shouldn't even say where their friends are, but this is like the. What they're saying, like twenty thousand to give somebody else twenty five years in life. I'm not part of this process. I'm not selling somebody out for twenty thousand dollars. If 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 it's your law and your process, then you finish your own process. Don't give me twenty thousand dollars to snitch. I need more like two hundred k. Now that we're negotiating, <laughs> call the government. I see the twenty thousand dollar reward. Yeah, that's, there's a twenty thousand dollar reward. Now that we're negotiating, <laughs> or hey. hello, 
is there a twenty thousand dollar reward? Can you check? Yeah, there's a twenty thousand dollar reward. I just want to make sure it's still an active reward. Okay, I'll check. Yes, it's an active reward. Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars, sir. Well now, well now that we're negotiating. Twenty thousand. I'm gonna need twenty thousand bitcoins, bitch. So, anyways, are we? No, uh, we, we want to figure more, out one, one, this, one last thing. How much thing. more of the story we got, man? It should be noted that the government repeatedly <laughs> touted this to be an eighteen or twenty million dollar case, depending on the day and who was speaking. At sentencing hearing, however, the court found that Richard is only responsible for a loss amount of range of a one point five million. Oh, they oversold it. That is a far cry from the government's theory in this case. This guy got way too many years for what he did. It's just money. I totally agree. One million percent. I mean, this is ridiculous. I think child pedophiles get away with less. This yeah, is yeah, they do. A fucking child pedophile gets like fucking like a few years, man. Tops like two, three years or something like that. Absolutely crazy what they did here. It was unfortunate that Mr. Uh, uh, Avaz, uh, uh, Avazan was not present. To uh, hey, no, you said it. That fucking a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a he had all these businesses. Maybe he was. This is all legal. Wait, what does it say there? It says uh, investor in crypto.com. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here is Marietta Taliban Wright. That's his wife. Was sentenced to six years in prison for conspiracy to commit fraud. She's texting her husband right now, like, "What the fuck, bro? <laughs> hey, motherfucker! I, I just got fucking six years, dude. My children. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Like, six, six years, balls, dude. Man. And he's like, I got twenty-five, bitch." <laughs> Please, I'm gonna figure this out. I want to see where they escaped to, or like what 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 happened last. So this is a crazy story. Look at this. The kids' guardians had hoped to send them to Armenia. Armenia. The couple's three children are under the care of the grandmother and a court-appointed guardian. It sounds like the government stole them. Like they were sending their children somewhere. He said oh, you that see, they had a plan. They were, they were already going right. back to like, Armenia. Yeah. And they were sending their fucking kids out there. And the government was like, no, yeah. we got your kids, bitch. He said that the caregivers That's recently... Up, man. That's fucked up. He said that the caregivers recently filed an... By emergency. the way, by the way, okay, you know who's behind all this? You know, you know who's behind all this? Fucking... Uh, I was going to say Nancy Pelosi, but no, it's actually... Uh, what the fuck? I can't... I forget the vice president's name. Jesus, she's so fucking oblivious. I mean, not oblivious. Uh, what is it? Well, what is the vice president's name for five dollars? Kamala Harris. Camel Toe Harris. Because she's from California. She's behind this. All right, man. Let's move on from this story. Dude. Hey, no, no, for go, it out. go. Hey, I just ended the clip, dude. It's over, man. Sorry, we're done, dude. We went for two hours. We're good. We're good. We're good, bro. That was a long story, bro. I know, but you just continued. Anytime you say anything, just you gotta listen back, man. I think we could do a better show if we just bounced off each other a little bit better. And sometimes, dude, I just get like, "What are you doing, dude?" I feel like we got some breaking news. Bitcoin's like uh, dumping, like hard. All right. Just I was like looking. It's like, well, I just wanted to hurry it through so you can. No, it's not. It's not even at its lowest yet today. I think it's how long, how long was that clip? How long was that clip? Um, I'd have to look. Maybe 30. 25 minutes. <laughs> you know how long the crypto.com arena was? <laughs> 45. Yeah, but we're talking about a bunch of shit. Yeah, I suppose. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, but this story, you know what? No, we didn't agree on this story. This story just came out of nowhere. You can't blame me completely. This story was kind of lame. I thought it was a great story, actually. Eh, it wasn't really. Why was it great? Because it was people running away from the government, money. Uh, there was, you know, conspiracy. There was a bunch of stuff going on in there, dude. No, it's just a bunch of. It's really just. Eh. Are you? Wait a second. Let me cue up a story that you brought to us 
Yeah. Okay, no, 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 but I mean, that story is the best story. But hold on, hold on. But that story with the, but hold on, hold on. Real, real quick. But that story with those people, that is like one in a, that's not, I don't want to mean, I don't know. It's like one in like, that happens a lot, is what I'm saying. That's, that's, not why, like, that's why it's good. That that's why it, it, could, it could apply to anybody as opposed to, I mean, you can choose the YouTube dislike button, which we've already covered. Yeah, that's a great one. We've already covered it. The Britney Spears oh, is released. No, thank you. Yeah, we don't have to cover that. And, but Bitcoin, and, the breaking news, Bitcoin is dumping hard. You don't think that's, no. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. And um, another one. Uh, yeah, I'll pull it up here. Anyway, uh, sixty-nine and four twenty are racist. <laughs> All those are way better than this, bro. That that one was too serious, bro. And it was just like I don't know. It was just not. Oh, just some God. people that stole some fucking money. And they left their fucking kids behind because they were about to go to jail. And there's a very unjust uh, penalty. It should have just been a few years instead of a lot. I get it. Yeah, it's a bad. That's just. Well, whenever um, I guess, I guess if you ever want to move on from a story, don't tell me that you want to move on. Just continue to interrupt. <laughs> That's what you should do, okay? I was just, just trying to make you fun, man. Let's just move on, I was bro. trying to make it just funny. Sure but the, just but what, when I was interrupting, I was just trying to make it funny, trying to make it interesting, okay. trying to, you know, you're yeah. reading a CNN article, bro. How is that a good segment? It was interesting to me, at least. Maybe I got lost to it. I'll listen back. CNN, bro. You're reading a I'll CNN. listen back, bro. I'll listen back. Just saying. Nancy, uh, Kamala Harris. Kamala <laughs> Harris. That's the vice president. That's right. All right. Bitcoin is 55.9. <laughs> that's nothing. That's like, like three what months do you mean ago. That's nothing, bro. We, we just lost like 10K in like a couple hours or something, bro. No. Which no. is fine. Which is fine. Buy that dip. But yeah, you're not watching Mitch Ray. I thought you were watching Mitch Ray. Oh, no, you're watching a podcast. <laughs> November 13 is when we were at. So yeah, we lost in about a week. We lost 10,000. <laughs> Oh uh, man, no, because I'm watching Mitch Ray. No, because I'm watching the, the channels that he has, you know what is it called? The the lines or whatever. And uh it seems like, yeah, I think like we might not we might go to 53. You got some money? I think we'll go down it? to 52, maybe. We could go down to 50. You I don't know if we line. will, but I think we'll go parts. down there. Cody says the government is lucky that I'm okay with taxes. I prefer not to pay it if I had an option, but they make you the have. dollar and they make the rule. Yeah, I suppose. But you'd rather not pay as many taxes, like pay as little as possible, right? That's right. You're going to get straight. That's right. Well, you know why? Because they're giving you as little as possible in return. So, you know, might as well just. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, as little as possible is actually what's, when people say as little as possible, that means what's technically owed, you know, that's the mm-hmm. truth. If, unless you're, it- unless you're a fool, do you overpay for no. things that, you know, like you often overpay for things? Well, mm-hmm. if you don't, then maybe you should pay quote as little as possible as if that's a bad thing. I pay what I'm, what, what's owed. That's right. That's what I like to pay for taxes. I like to pay what's owed. I agree. And that doesn't mean just taking the face value and going, oh yeah, here we go. No, no, no. no you just gotta make sure that you pay, you know, the right amount. Right, which means it could, could be very low. It could be yeah, very it low. means low. It doesn't mean start filing fake ID, fake businesses. No, no, all legal. That's one thousand percent legal. One thousand percent legal way. Right. One thousand percent legal way to yes. Make sure that you uh, pay. Lodak says, screw the dollar. Cody says, you own it. You make the rules is what I believe in as a libertarian. Oh, I didn't know Cody was a libertarian. Oh, Shout yeah. out to you. Look at that. Yeah, Cody's a libertarian. Anthony libertarian. says, you get a free tax write-off when you sell it low. Tax at a loss. And buy it right back. You're always fucking loud. Always a loss, bro. I'm a, I'm a perpetual loser, bro. According to the taxes. I lose a lot. Price change of Bitcoin in the past 24 hours. Negative $4,300. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel... Warm and fuzzy on the inside. Fuzzy. I feel like uh, 
a million bucks. That's right. Let me see, you know, like I recently purchased, not that anybody cares about my specific purchases, but I recently purchased some, uh, some coinage on the Solana network and I just bought on Monday. It was not a great time to buy. I bought about, uh, bought about a thousand dollars worth. I'm logging in. I'm going to see what the damage is. (laughs) Not going to be good. But yeah, man, like, uh, it's gonna be fucking, uh, fucking cool, man. <laughs> what is? What we uh, Bitcoin Girl. losing 4,400? Well, yeah, because you get to buy the dip. It's not, I mean, it didn't lose $4,400, did it? 4,400 is what you mean, right? Yeah. Yes. $4,400. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it lost more than that. Well, that's just how much Bitcoin's hours. lost in the past 24 hours. Okay, but yeah, like in the last 48, it's lost like 10. Yeah. No, no. no. Six. <laughs> Somewhere around there. I think it's taken like a week for it to lose 10. No, I don't. Well. Thanks. So. Whatever. I mean, you know, you know what they say, bro. You know what a great man once said, right? That it is what it is. No doubt. No doubt. Shout out to you. Shout out. And there's a gentleman in the chat. What else did that fucker say? Let's take a poll. Let's take a poll. We should start taking polls. Yeah, we got to start taking polls. You know, we're fucking up, man. We're dropping the ball. We are dropping the ball. It's because we're so busy. I mean, it's the end of the year. Everybody's getting everything set up for the rest of the year. I don't By the way. You, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I feel very, very busy. Yeah, not so much over here. I feel happy. But look, hey, man, before we, we go any further, I want to say I'm sorry, man. I apologize for the last segment. I wasn't re- my heart wasn't into it. I wasn't. That story was kind of lame. Hey, man, just listen back on the clip. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're sure, right. Sure. I was trying to add a comment. I, don't, to I never know until I listen back. But I did feel like, you, uh, you know, if you just want to end the clip, you could just say, hey, let's end the story. But I guess maybe you did say that. I don't know. You know listen back. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really like, fucking matter. Like times, actually, the, but, you know. That's okay. The, the truth is, it doesn't even fucking matter. But we do have to stop interrupting each other. Like that just. I agree. I agree. But I was just, uh, I was just trying to add a little comedy, you know, to the. But I agree. Okay. Well, you know, we can ask the audience. The, uh, maybe I'm They're wrong. They're never going to be honest with us. They, they, they don't story. even know what they want. We got to tell them. We, we got to deliver a product and hope that they like it. Yeah, They're not they, there to create maybe, the product. Maybe they thought it was a good story, and I'm the one that's being a, a lameo. You know, maybe. Did you guys like the story about those? Guys well, I know got- that there's certain people out there who also or like own small businesses and probably took what's fair, and they would be interested in hearing about what the government's doing about certain people who took more than dude, like these motherfuckers. I mean, dude. I mean, any, well, we're I mean, not talking about it anymore, Jose. There was a time and a there was a time and a place, specifically yeah. in the clip. We're moving on now. We are gliding. The same. The same. Okay. I mean, well, if you. You wanted to say anything about it there was a specific time and there was a specific place. you know I, yeah. oh you know what bro uh no, i'm gonna i'm gonna, gonna, gonna just put some more marshmallows i'm gonna put more marshmallows in my fucking uh hot chocolate over here okay all right so i'm gonna do so i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm gonna keep drinking <laughs> keep drinking this hot chocolate okay by the way i'm not drinking just hot chocolate that's all i'm drinking okay with marshmallows all right that's yes. it for the show, guys. We've gone Wait. two hours. We went a little early, and I'll tell you why. No, we got two minutes. This is we got yeah, two well, minutes. Yeah, this is the wrap up. Okay. And the reason why is because tomorrow morning, I am off to Wisconsin, and I have to leave my place at six a.m. So I have to be up at around five thirty, fully packed on the road, six hours over to Wisconsin, awesome. to be out there at noon, to complete my work uh, before the sun sets. So I got I have some work to do on a on a home out there, so I'm gonna do that. So hey, are you gonna go uh, to the football game, the 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 unvaxxed quarterback showdown? Yes, and then on Sunday it's the Vikings versus the Packers, Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins, the battle of the unvaxxed quarterbacks. <laughs> and if you think about it, this might be like the one true. The game of the week, bro. Everybody's well, yeah, saying it's like, it's- hey, you're gonna put an unvaxxed quarterback up. It's just like old time. You want to see a game <laughs> like before 2019, like 2020? This is just like old times. Can't see this anymore. Two unvaxxed quarterbacks, right? 
I mean, unless you're playing Tom Brady, he's probably also on Vax. He, he's not fucking around. Yeah, how come no one's talking? come no one's fucking around with Tom Brady? That motherfucker is not Vax, bro. One nine, one million percent. No way, Jose. I've kind of lost some respect for Tom Brady. The fact that he's just really yeah, because he's just existing in this environment, and he has the power and you know the platform no. to stand up and, and stand Brady. up for his fellow, not for us, no not way. for us. But no he, he, way. he doesn't up. owe anything to anybody. He's Tom Brady. He doesn't owe anything to anybody, but he does. Actually, you know what? He does owe something to some people. He owes. He owes to stand up, not for anybody like in the starting lineup on his thing, but for his practice squad fellows who put their like, you know, play with him every single week. For his offensive Listen, linemen man, I'm who sure, are replaceable I'm sure. and his backup offensive linemen, because those people don't have the freedom to dictate rules to the NFL Look, and they right have to now. get vaccinated or they're fired. And meanwhile, Tom Brady out there, he can probably just say, Hey guys, I'm not getting vaccinated. No, I don't think, I don't think you, uh, you understand. Listen, if Tom, and by the way, not just Tom Brady, but I'm sure any leader out there, like, uh, like, uh, what's it like cousins and, uh, easily. and, and Aaron Rodgers it's and people Ray. like that. If all of a sudden their team in solidarity as a team said, we're not going to fucking take this shit. And, you know, Tom Brady would fucking back them up one million percent. He doesn't. Why would he not back them up? He's not doing it either. But if they choose to do it, who the fuck is he to fucking tell them otherwise? You don't understand. These people who just came out of college and are Mm. on the football team have worked their whole lives for this. No, man. I guarantee guarantee that there was never a moment where it was like, hey, guys, let's all team up. No, they never. They never. It was. The profit of the industry, the players union, I get it, never I get it. That's negotiated job, the bro. rights of the players to be able to stay unvaccinated because the NFL needs to make money. And that's what they were going to do. So, yeah. So, but regardless, I don't blame the of, that. This is the equivalent of uh, like, now I know Rocky Balboa or whoever. Better, Dude, the, if I was Tom Brady, I keep doing whatever the fuck he's a doing. A greater because. person than Tom Brady. No, whatever. Listen, Tom Brady is the best. Like right now, um, and like if, if whatever the fuck he's doing, I would just keep doing that because they're not really fucking with him. I know they tried to fuck with him about that a while ago, months ago, but they're not really fucking with him about that, and they're just letting him uh, be Tom Brady and uh, whatever he's doing, he's doing it right because they're fucking with uh, they're fucking with uh, Aaron Rodgers. How come they're not messing with Kirk Cousins? If he wins, if he wins, I'll probably fuck with him because he hasn't. He hasn't had to miss any games. They don't have anything on him. If he wins, if he beats, if he, he hasn't beats actually a- announced that he's unvaccinated either. He just is. He's just unvaccinated. Yeah. Because well, I mean, I don't think Aaron announced it. I think they just forced it or something out of him, right? Or something. Well, he tested negative on a Wednesday, and then, he, well, he tested positive on like a Tuesday, and then that meant if he was vaccinated, he needed two negative tests over the course of four days, and then he could play. But if he was unvaccinated, there was this other protocol and timeline, and he had to miss the game, so everyone knew. Got it. That hasn't happened to Kirk Cousins yet. Not yet. That'll what happen. if uh, Aaron Rodgers gives it to him? Can you imagine? Can you imagine they use the same ball? You know what's funny? Anyways, I was going to say they don't fucking put gel on the ball, right? They fucking swab it down. It's going to be a great game on Sunday. That's at noon. Yeah, man. Vikings are still. I might, I might watch that instead of the Dolphins game, bro. That's how much we fucking. No, the Dolphins are actually we're winning again. Fucking horrible, bro. I hate my team. Fucking uh, Tua got like you know Tua got like all the boosters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tua lined up for the fucking booster. Oh my god. Yeah, and by the way, Lodak, yeah. your Buffalo Bills. They suck. No. Josh, By the way, the Josh Patriots Allen. are going to fucking take the division, bro. I cannot believe that they, the Patriots are going to take the division. Belichick is the real deal. Holy field, bro. Josh ahead, Allen sorry. and the entire Bills stadium lined up to take that booster. Yeah, bro. You should become a Pats, Patriots fan. I am kind of a Patriots fan, actually. Yeah, me too. I'm a Patriots fan and, uh, and a Tom oh, Brady fan. Yeah. They both are in my respect, all right? That's right. And I like Kirk Cousins, and I like Aaron Rodgers. Yep. And I hate Tua. I don't like Tua. I don't like Drew Brees, even though a lot of people do, but I never liked them. Really? Why? What did he do to you? Uh, Bounty Gate and that type of thing. 
Oh, come on. The Tom Brady, don't get me. I'm absolutely certain that all the teams did it, but you have to understand that, like, for us as the Vikings, that kind of, you know, it made it seem like they, that stole us a Super Bowl. So I'll get over it. Because rationally, oh, I understand. Okay, because you, okay, you got a rivalry thing with them. That's different. Okay. Yeah, they stopped us from getting to the Super Bowl with Brett Favre. Uh, okay, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, okay. And then that whole thing. Yeah, I hate him too. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. He was and supposed, then, like, to, play, Matthew... supposed to play for the Dolphins, but the Dolphins didn't pick him, so he went to the Saints, and the rest is history. Wow. And then Matthew Stafford. I don't mind Matthew Stafford. Um, is he still playing, bro? Only on the oh best team God. in the NFC. Oh, my God. He's playing for the Rams. How old is that guy already? Uh, maybe 30. Stafford? Stafford, yeah. Yeah, the white guy, the big tall white guy. Yeah, right? he looks like a big old, like he's a big quarterback. He's playing for LA? He's 33 years old. Yeah, he's playing for LA and he's like the, like, dude, they are the best team. LA That's or Rams. hilarious. You know, he's from, he originally played for USC. Hmm, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, wow. And they're yeah. like the best team in the NFC. Like they just lost last week for some reason, but technically LA okay. Rams record. What are they? The standings? They are. But they lost though. They just lost. They got their ass kicked, didn't they? Yeah, but they're actually very good though. They're seven and three. Okay. Wait, well, I think the Dolphins are three and seven. <laughs> Vikings are like four and five. We're right there. Yep. Okay. Four and five. Hey, my tackles are almost here. And, and by the way, the Panthers are in the wild seed spot in the NFC. Hey. And they are five and five. And what about are, the Vikings? We are four and five. Look at that. <laughs> so Playoffs. Time, yeah, exactly. So we could definitely get into the wild card spot. Just so you know. Yes. I know. So, All right, boys. All right. You guys were amazing as usual. Jose, on the other hand, I'm just kidding. Terrible. In fact, I'm so bad. I'm leaving early. I'm going to go get my tacos, right? <laughs> Don't leave. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. I, was, I hope you see you guys on uh, Monday. Yes, we will yes. be back on Monday night. Until then, um, have a great weekend, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, have a great weekend. I'm coming up with a song here. Uh, this will work. This will work. It's loading up. Let me read the last of the comments, then we'll sign off. Always good to take profits, Anthony says. That's a truism. Yep, that's always true. All right, we're signing off on that. <laughs> I read one comment. Jose says goodbye. We will be back on Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Until then, you guys have a great weekend. Talk to you then. Stay, uh, stay busy and uh, have a nice weekend, okay? Talk to you guys Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. The price is up, but then Best as soon ever. as I open my long, you become somebody else. Big market sells. I'm watching my stock.